Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the AI generated quizzes and tests. In this week's training, I'm going to show you how you can create your very own chat GPT generated quiz application with unlimited quizzes, unlimited questions, and we're going to turn all that into a powerful quiz application, which you can have any student take timed quizzes on all of your new quizzes. It's going to be an incredible training. I cannot wait. So let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me. I've got a really fantastic training today in which I am going to show you how you can take the power of ChatGPT and Excel, combine them to create one of the most powerful quiz applications you've ever seen. One of the hardest parts about creating quiz tests or exams is coming up with the questions. Well, in this type of training, it is done automatically and it's done on a single click. For example, if we want to create a brand new quiz, maybe we want to do some 90s movie trivia, 90s movie. All we need to do is just put in movie trivia here, put in the name of it, put in a subject here. We will call this, uh, let's say, movies and TV. So we give it a nice subject. That way we can easily track it inside our application and then we just need a small description create a quiz on 90s movie trivia okay there we go that's all we need to do click generate quiz it's going to do all the work for us that information is going to come directly in chat gpt live time while i'm talking to you in just a few seconds and it's coming in right now there it is all of it right there all we need to do is just save the quiz it is now available here inside our 90s movie trivia as we have others all the questions came up all the options and the answer here we can then take all of that that we just learned and bring it into a quiz sheet right here so for example if we go back to start we create a brand new quiz we're going to select a student here selecting the category here movies and tv and that one that we just created right here turns it into an incredible quiz just like that we can then select the correct or incorrect answer however we like going through all of the items we can select the number of questions we want fully dynamic in this application once we get to the end it's going to let us know how many we got right now i have no idea because finish the quiz our final score is four out of ten answered correctly it's fully dynamic out of ten we got a 40 percent not very good but pretty good for not paying attention okay we can retake the quiz we can put a timer on the quiz we can set a time limit on the quiz so much to share with you today i do appreciate here if you just want to use this application that's fine i'm going to go over that with you if you want to learn how to make it i'm going to go over that with you as well so we got a lot to cover today if you do like these trainings i just ask a few things just go ahead and say, click the subscribe button and don't forget the notification icon bell that'll ensure that you get these trainings each and every tuesday when i bring them to you so i do appreciate that also go ahead and click the like button and i've got some really amazing deals for you to help support the channel the first is a patreon for example, if you're going to take a look at this quiz application, you might want some feature in here, or you might want some fix, or there might be an issue. I am taking care of that, all that on our Patreon platform. What I'm going to do every single week, I create a brand new training and a new workbook upload based on your suggestions that week. Not only that, but what I do is I also take all the code and I put it into a beautiful PDF code book every single week, only for our Patreon members. Also, you get full replies, right? That means any question you have on Patreon, I reply right there, personally reply to them. And also you get discounts on a whole lot of other benefits. You get early access to these videos and workbooks. So, so much going on. I hope you join us here on Patreon. All right, I want to get started right away because we do have a lot to cover. What we'll do is we'll give you a general overview. I just give you a quick sample there. And then we're going to get into some more of the details. And then we're going to get into the code. So that's how things are going to work. It might move a little bit quick for you because we do have a lot to cover. But feel free to watch this video as many times as you like. If you want this sample workbook, it is absolutely free. All you need to do is click the links down in the description. And we'll get that sent over to you with your name and your email. All right, continuing on. So let's get a little bit of an overview and see what kind of options, what kind of power you can have with this. Now, you might have a lot of more ideas, and I want to hear about those ideas in the comments below. So let me know what you think, and I'll be answering. We have an admin screen with just some basic information, and this could grow as the application grows. We have some information for our chat GPT, including an API, 
a model, a temperature, and a quiz language, which is kind of nice. We can have that quiz returned in any type of language. For example, if we change this to, let's say, Spanish, we want this in Spanish, and we decide we want the questions in Spanish. When we go back to the quiz sheet, and let's say the generate quizzes, and we want to regenerate the 90s movie, but we want it in Spanish, all we need to do is just click generate. It says we've already saved it. We want to replace the questions we have, and we do. So we're going to click yes, and now we're going to see that all the questions and all the options are now in Spanish. So we can definitely change the language of this, which is going to be really helpful. So you can have that. So notice how all the questions here are now in Spanish. So cool, right? All we need to do is just change the language down here. So I thought that would be very helpful to you, and I'm happy to share that with you. What other options do we have? We might want to put a timer on a quiz. We can say yes or no on that. We may want to give the users back to start option. What does that mean? That means we have this option here so we can go back to the start if we want to go back, okay? Or we can continue the quiz where we left off. We can do that. Now, what else do we have? We also have the ability to have a back option, right? Notice we can go back to the previous questions, right? We're at the first question. So we can do that. We can retake the quiz back to the start here or previous button. So if we're moving, we may want to give the users the ability to go back or we can go back to the start. So those are two options based on the admin screen. We can give the user the ability to retake the quiz. So if we go into the quiz sheet and we will continue the quiz and we go back, what we want to do once we get to the final one, we may want to give the users the ability to retake it. This button will appear dynamically. Also, another option is do we want to show the results? We can see that the results are shown here. But if we were to retake the quiz, and let's go back here, I'm going to set this to no here, so we don't want to show the results. If we go back into the quiz sheet, we go back to the last question, finish the quiz, all they get for this is thank you for taking the quiz. No results appear there. So that's kind of helpful to them. And so we can see that and it took us 10 seconds to complete the course. Okay, so that's all we have to do. So, so we have some really nice settings in the admin. We have a time limit. So each course we can have a time limit. When we generate and create these quizzes, we've got some options. We've got a name that we're going to add, a category, the difficulty level. Maybe we want to add a more difficult, right? If we add a 10 difficulty level and I say and I generate this quiz, those answers are then going to be regenerated at a higher difficulty level. We can set the number of questions. How many questions do we want to download and here in 10? And so now we supposedly this is a lot harder questions. Okay, so inside with the number of questions, we have a description. We have whether we're going to use the time limit or not on a specific quiz. And we have a set of time limits. So we can set a dynamic time limit based on every single quiz. So that's going to be really helpful. We have this really cool feature here so we can select on the category if we only want to see quizzes that are in a specific category. If we want to select all categories, we can do that so we can see all the quizzes based on that. So very, some very, very cool. Now, regardless of the type of quiz, ChatGPT, the API is going to take care of that for us. So whatever we ask for, it'll be generated in here. So it's a really cool ability to do that. And so, all right, so what about this application? How does it work? So we have an admin, we've got a quiz sheet, and this is going to run through all the questions. We've got a progress bar. So as we start to answer questions, that progress bar is going to grow. We've got a timer on here. We've got the question number up here, the student taking the quiz. And we also have the name of the quiz up at the top here. So we've got a lot of features on this. How is it going to work, right? How do we make this happen? Well, the first thing what we're going to do is I'm just going to go into a little overview of how do we store this data. First, we have the generate quizzes. So what do we need in this? We have some high level information. We want to store this quiz. We want all these fields, the name, category, the difficulty level. We want to store those somewhere else because we can't store them on this sheet because they're going to get cleared and replaced. So we are going to store that on a sheet called quiz data. And so here we have a quiz ID, which is unique to every quiz. We have the quiz name, as you saw. We have a description here. We have a category that we're setting, the number of questions, the difficulty level, whether we're going to use the time limit, and then the time limit here. So that's where that's stored. So, but what about the individual questions? For every single question, we have an option one, two, three, or four, and we have an answer. 
So all of that needs to be stored somewhere. So where, and of course, when you're taking a quiz, all these sheets would be hidden, right? Users would only have access to this sheet there and nothing else when you wanna give the workbook out to quiz somebody or if you wanna use it yourself, that's fine. Of course, it's a great way to test yourself too. We can make one on VBA code, but I'm afraid to take that during this training, so I won't. Okay, so where are those quiz questions stored? They're stored in this particular workbook. So here we have our quiz ID, we have the quiz name, the question, the question number, right? So we have a question number. We have an option number one. So these are the answers, right? Option one, option two, option three. Then we have the answer. And then we have the row, the database row that's situated. So basically what we want to do is when we select a quiz from here, we want to load the high level information here from this database. And then we also want to load all the questions that are associated with that. And of course, we can have a lot of questions if we want to, but if we only, so if we want to change this number to, let's say 13 questions and we regenerate the quiz, it's going to clear out all the existing questions and it's going to regenerate it. Now, the time that it takes is, you know, it's going to be live time. I'm not going to edit this. So you can see how long it takes, but not very long, probably about six seconds. And it generated 13 questions here. What is the correct article to use with the word Apple. Okay, so it's kind of nice. It's a great way. We've got English grammar here. This is a sixth grade English student. So that is how quick we can actually create that. And don't forget to save it once we make those changes. Okay, no. So those questions are then saved, of course, on our database here. All right. So however, we also have a quiz sheet here. Now the quiz sheet is going to be a little bit different. What do we need to store? I want to store information for the quiz, right? So we got to store that. So we've got quiz results. So all of the results are stored here. We've got the result ID. So each time they take a quiz, each time we create a brand new quiz, we have a result, right? So this is called the result database, right? So we have one quiz, right? The, we have a unique student, the questions, right? The questions that go through that. We have what type of a course it was. So we want to store all that somewhere. Where do we want to store it? We're going to store that in called the quiz results. This is going to keep track of the ID. What is the name of the quiz? So if remember, every quiz has an ID and every quiz has a name. Inside our quiz data, we have an ID and we have a name. Now the name is not required, but it is helpful when we have that. So it is helpful that we can recognize the ID and the name. Also, we have a student ID and a student name. If we take a look inside, we have a student sheet here. I've got four different students and a student name. So we have that. It is that same drop down list that you saw right here, this student list name. So it's a drop down list of student names. We want to store all that information there. It's important. Okay, so inside our quiz results, all, we have both of those. I want to know the total number of questions that were there. I want to know how many that they actually answered and I want to know how many were correct, and I want to know what that correct percentage was. So I want all that information stored in the quiz results. Now, also, when they answer a question, we need to determine what their answer was and what the correct answer was, and we need to store that somewhere, right? So we have individual quizzes. This Fred Fetters took this English grammar student. There was 10 questions. Uh, they didn't answer any, or they answered, uh, total answer, I have to fix that, I see that's a little bit buggy. Should be the total correct is nine, so this should be nine, I'll fix that. Um, and uh, so there's a 90%, right? They total correct were nine out of 10, so they scored a 90%. I'll double check the figures on here just to make sure when you get the workbook, the code's right, because I think there's a few issues in there. But so we would want to know the total correct, okay? However, this is only the main information. I want individual answers here. So when we have individual answers, I want to know that too. So again, we have the result. Now remember, results come here, right? Results one through 10. Here we have, that means 10 people have taken the quizzes, right? And so here inside our quiz, we have the quiz results. So for each question, we have this. So here, the quiz name, student ID, the student name, the question on question number one, their answer was this, right? The student answer, the correct answer was also back to the future and it's correct. We also want to store the row. Okay, so we have all, so that's going to help us determine how many correct answers we have on what quiz and what student, because all we need to use is use the sum if. So this is going to keep track of it. Obviously, if the student answered Robert Zemeckis and Robert Zemeckis and the correct answer is Rob Reiner, that's going to be false. So all we need to do is put in a formula in here. And basically, it's going to say if these two are not equal, it's false. So for every single time a student 
answers the question, it's going to be put down here. How does that work? Okay, let's take a look at this one, right? We have 90s movie trivia. I'm going to click on quiz sheet, and I'm going to continue the quiz here. And uh, let's see, no questions exist for this quiz. And we'll create a brand new quiz. I think it's better. So what I'll do is I'll create a brand new quiz so we can go from the start. And we'll select a category. Uh, let's do movies. And then what we'll do is we'll just select a specific quiz. So notice that this is a dynamic drop down list. If I were to select English, you would see that only the English courses are here. However, if I select math, only the math courses are here. So first grade math. Okay, so if we were going to start a quiz and we want to see what type of course we want, just so we can see how it affects the database, I'll go ahead and put in, uh, let's say, movies and trivia. And then we'll do, let's say, John Candy quiz based on that. So we're going to start the quiz. And now it says, what year did John Candy, poor guy, yeah, he was a great actor. He's one of my favorite. Okay, 94, I believe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go next. Now, I just want to show you inside the question results here. Here we have it here. So here, if we take a look at this, I'm going to freeze these so we can see the headers too. So we'll go into view and then we'll do freeze panes and I'll freeze that. Okay, so when we scroll up, we are going to see John Candy, right? So student ID, Mary Smith. We have the question number one. The student answer was 1994. The correct answer was 994. It's true. It's correct. And then we have a row of 75. So we can see how our answers are automatically aff afflicted directly in the database. What was the movie John Candy start alongside Steve Martin? That was one of my favorite movies. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. An excellent movie. And so as we see, we can see how these affect the database right here. So if we take a look inside the quiz, we see our brand new one, our John Candy quiz here our student ID, and then we have the number of questions. And then add, when we finish this course, this will need to get updated. So I'll be working on that. So that's only on completion, right? So I'll make sure that that gets updated. And then so basically, that's how it affects the database, right? So I have no idea on this one. All right, so if it's a wrong answer, if we go look here, we see that it's wrong answer is going to be false. Okay, so we kind of understand how the database works, right? Again, so we just have a few sheets. We have the admin that's going to focus on all the administration. We've got a quiz in which we're going to be taking the quiz. We have our generated quiz in which we'll be able to create brand new quizzes, delete existing quizzes, or maybe we want to update existing quizzes. We can also make changes if we decide we want to make changes or we find that ChatGPT provided a wrong answer. We can make that update and then click save. So we can also make changes to this data if we want to and then click save. So that's going to be very helpful. And then we also have the quiz data which keeps track of the individual quizzes here and all the information along with the individual questions for each quiz. Then we have the results in a database and then we have the individual question results and the student. So that's kind of a great overview of how we're going to make it. But let's get into how we actually get this data because this is really cool. How do we go in to basically take a question like this and turn it into actual data like this, all downloaded from the internet in just a few seconds using the ChatGPT API? If you're new to ChatGPT, it is an amazing, uh, let's say, pack right here. Let's say we have, here's our chat gpt it's going to be come from open ai so if you're not heard of it go to open ai for most of us it's free to a certain amount so you can get started for free on this if you don't have an account yet just click try chat gpt and then it'll go to basically a login screen where you can log in and then or you can sign up of course once you get it so basically what we want to do is we want to create a course so we're going to say something like this inside the prompt if we were to do it directly inside the chat GPT window here in our browser, it would look something like this. We'd say create a course with, let's say, let's do quiz, right? With four options and an answer on, let's say, John Candy movies. And then, of course, the prompt's going to be more detailed. This is the prompt where we're typing it in. So this is what we're going to do, but we're going to do it inside Excel. Results should be in table format. Okay, so then we're going to add that. So now it's going to think about that. It's going to take away and it didn't return in table. Oh, there it is. There's the table format. So here is our options, right? So we see question two. I don't think I've specified how many. So basically we can get all of that information, but we're going to get it inside Excel. So this is kind of the idea. So it gives a question and then we have the answer. So notice it says answer D here and it's got the answers here. So we see how we can use ChatGPT. Once you get your account, you're going to need an API for that. An API is a key. So to do that, we're going to go into this, which is called openai.com account and API keys. 
Once you get your account, you'll go to this link, open API, API keys. You'll come here inside here and you'll go view API keys here. And it's going to send you to this screen. You can create a brand new secret key by clicking on here and then or you can delete a key by clicking on here. Once you create a brand new key here, you want to copy that key. And then what you want to do is you will want to you can remove the key. You want to paste it directly inside the admin. You're going to paste it right here, right in here. Now, it's no problem. You're allowed to see my secret API key because after this training, I'm going to delete it. Even if I forget to remove it in the workbook, it won't be helpful to you because it won't work anymore. Once I get done, I just and that's the beauty of it. I just delete these uh, keys as after I use them. So they're very easy. And then so your account now keep in mind, you go to billing. So inside you have a billing and your usage. So this is how much we've been using it. Uh, I originally signed up. This is a different account. Uh, I'm using an API from a different account, actually. So generally, you'll get a five dollar balance before it was an eighteen dollar. So I think they changed it. OK, so you can use it for free in the beginning. All right. So that's what we have here. So we're going to put that API. Now, that's really all you have to do. OK, we also have some other settings a model here. If we take a look inside, we see a model. This is the text DaVinci model. We're currently using this one, 003. This is for the API. You can keep it at this. Eventually, it will get upgraded, but this is OK. Temperature is kind of a nice thing. If you're getting kind of like strange results that don't make sense, you want to lower the temperature. If you want the results to be a little bit more creative, you can raise the temperature. It goes from anywhere from zero to one. Okay. And then the language, the quiz language is kind of nice. So we can change that. I showed you that before. And then we have the timer settings. Okay. So basically that is it as far as API. So that's all you're going to need at least to get this working. Okay. So for those of you that want to learn a little bit more to see exactly how we get these results, I'm going to go in step by step to show you exactly how we do that. Okay, great. So what we're going to do first thing is we're going to go inside the developers. I want to show you how we generate these results. So we're going to go inside the developer and we're going to go into the visual basic. You can also use alt F 11. That's a shortcut to get you there. Now we have several modules here. So I've got three modules here, get quiz data, quiz, save and load. And we have the run quiz macros. So we're going to focus on the get quiz data because that's what I want to do is get quiz data. Now, if we take a look at this button right here, generate quiz and I right click, I click and assign macro. We are going to see that that macro, that's the first one we're going to go over called generate quiz data. It is that macro that fills all the data in here. OK, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to expose some of the numbers that are currently hidden so that you can kind of see some of the background information that's going to help. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the formats of these. Currently, it is hidden with a custom format. I've got some numbers in here. I'm going to set this to general. Now you see these numbers that are here. These are related to the database numbers. If I want to hide them again, all I'm going to do is go into number formats. I'm going to go into the number. I'm going to use a custom format and I'm going to use two semicolons. If it's text, you're going to use three semicolons, but just numbers two is sufficient. We're going to click OK and that's going to hide the numbers. I'll control Z and undo that because I want to see the numbers. So what are these numbers? These are the individual database rows where the course is stored. So if I see English grammar, I know that it is Actually, these are the IDs. Sorry, these are the IDs. These are the rows. So this is ID number two. If we take a look inside the quiz data, if we remember, each one came with an ID. So English grammar has ID of two. We can see in the high level English has an ID of eight. So we see that it's ID. So what that means when I want to click on this, normally you wouldn't see this, that it is that ID that I'm going to use to help me load it, which will be going over. These numbers here are the individual database rows where this question is stored. As you remember, we have a specific table or database or worksheet, however you want to call it, that stores the questions, the four options and the answer. And that's going to be located on row 64. And that's our quiz questions here. So if I go down here into all the way row 64 and you see here it is high level, what type? declarative exclamation. So we have the information here. This is directly coming from row 64. So all that information. And again, if we are going to freeze this pane, we would see I should probably freeze it here under the view. And then we'll just go ahead and freeze those panes. OK, so now we can see there. So 64 is what if we take a look inside this, we have our quiz ID. We have our quiz name. We have our question. Then we have our, our question number. I want to keep track of the number. And then we have the four options and then we have the answer. So inside our generate quizzes here again, we have the question. 
We have the four options and then we have the answer. So we know what row is. And that's very important. If I generate a quiz and there's already data on it, I need to make sure to remove the old data, right? If it's a brand new quiz, there's no data here. However, if there's an existing quiz, then I want to make sure that, because if I'm going to regenerate, what I want to do is I want to remove all the existing questions, options, and answers, and I want to create brand new ones. So that's the first part of this code is to check to see if it already has. We know if there's data here, then we know we need to replace it. So let's take a quick look. Also, we have some columns, columns A and B, that are going to be used for admin. We have just a little bit of information here. This is the selected quiz ID. So notice if I select here, it's going to change to two. So this, then it comes directly from here. This is the row that is situated on row. So row five, this is the next available quiz ID. So if we go into quiz data, we see that the next available one would be 12. So we use the max formula to generate that. This is the selected category row. Notice we have some categories here. This is the selected quiz row. So we use conditional formatting. So when I click on it, it is the row that I've selected that is gonna go directly inside here. So this is the row that I've selected, row eight, row seven, or row six, that is gonna go directly into B7. We've got some conditional formatting. I'll just go ahead and show you that real quick. And then gonna go conditional formatting, and then we're gonna manage the rules. And basically, per column, column D and column E, we have three rules. So these first are for column E, and the second, third are for column D. So basically, we're gonna say whatever row was selected, we wanna put it that dark green with white bold font for column D. So that's based on B7, the selected category row. And we also want to call the alternating rows based on the mod format that for odd rows, mod row two equals one, that's going to be an odd row. And then we also want the mod row two equals zero, that's for even rows. And that's based on D5, that means the first row in the range. So notice our range starts with D5 all the way through D56 and our first row. We're going to do exactly the same for B for columns E, except E is going to be based on eight. You see eight here. That is the selected quiz row. Again, we are going to give it that dark green background with the bold white font. Also alternating rows of green and white. So that's basically all we have to do for the conditional formatting. Okay, so inside this macro, we can use it. We can get it to right here, clicking assign macro and editing it is the first one that I want to go through with you. So how do we make this happen? So first of all, it's gonna be called generate quiz data. And we're going to dimension the uh, OXML HTTP. That's going to help send that request so that we can get the results okay, in a JSON format. We want it in a JSON body. That's going to give us that string. We want the response in a string, the prompt. That's what we're going to send it, the information, the temperature, the model, and the parsed answer. So the temperature and the model, that's all coming from here inside the admin. The temperature and the model. So we need to know that. So that's gonna be important as we need to move through it. I wanna know the name of the quiz, that name of the quiz. Let's bring this down so we can see both the background screen. And then we're gonna go over to the generate quizzes. That name of the quiz is gonna come directly from H4. We need to see that. The quiz description, what is the description of the quiz? I also wanna know the last question row and the last option column, we'll be going over that. And the API key string, right? The API key is gonna come directly from the admin. We're gonna put that in a string. We're gonna call that API. And we're gonna use some arrays. So I need to know the column array, the row array, row data, language, right? What language that's gonna come directly from the admin screen. What is the quiz ID? I need to know the ID of the quiz and the quiz category. Each quiz has a category and it has an ID. I also wanna know the question data and the options text, option data, off. So these are some strings that we'll be going over, okay? And then we have some rows, some question row, the option row. So each one of these are long variables. I'll be going over those uniquely. And then we have some other long variables here, question number, okay? So first thing what I want to do is with the sheet, this sheet is called quiz generator. This is the code name for the sheet called quiz generator. If I take a look inside here, this is the sheet here. If we go into here, we can see that we've named it quiz generator. That's the sheet that we're focused on. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to do, I want to check for a previously saved quiz. If it's a new quiz, we're going to use a formula here to determine it. It's going to be based on the quiz ID. So if there's no quiz ID in B4, this formula matching a quiz ID, the 
quiz ID is a named range. So if we use a quiz ID, and it is the named range based on this data here. If we look in the formulas, and we go into the name manager, and we scroll all the way down to quiz ID, we've got several ones. This quiz ID, we're gonna tab over, and we're gonna use the offset formula here. If we zoom in, we can see the offset formula starting on a row three, which is our header row, moving one row down, we're gonna use count A, so that's gonna do minus one, again, minus one, because we don't wanna include the header. And that's all we're going to be able to need to do in order to create a dynamic named range for the quiz ID. And if we tab into it or tab out it, we're gonna see the dancing around it so that we know it encompasses all of the data. So we can close that out. So that's the quiz ID. So now when we take that named branch and we use the match and we match something in B4, if B4 is empty, it's gonna return an error. If it's an error, it's gonna return blank. However, if we do have a correct ID, it will return the row number. So I know if this is not blank, then it already has been created. I know if B5 does not equal empty, that means this quiz has been previously saved. Quiz previously saved. Okay, so if it's been previously saved, what do I need to do? I need to make sure I wanna delete any questions that might be here. And I would know if there's rows associated with that database rows, I need to go through those rows. But what I really want to do is I want to go through in reverse order. Whenever you're deleting rows, you have to go into highest row first and then back. So I need to take delete row 106 first, then 105, then 104, and so on and so forth. And so to do that, what we need to do is let the user know this quiz has been saved already. Are you sure you want to remove all of the existing questions and answers and replace them? And if they say no, we are going to exit the sub. If they say yes, we are going to continue down and we're gonna determine the last row. What is the last row based on column O? So I wanna know the last row. In this case, the last row is 47. So I want, because I need to extract that database row directly from there. If the last row is less than 11, it means we have no data, right? If the last row is less than our first row, that means we have no quiz data and we can escape out of there. All we would need to do is just go to skip delete and it's gonna drop it right down here. If it is not empty, what we're gonna do is we are going to run a loop. However, this is very important. We're not gonna run from 94 because if I delete row 94, then 95 becomes 94 and it messes things up a lot. We always wanna delete our highest row first. And so in this type of application, our lowest rows are always gonna be on top. Our newest rows, are, our highest rows are always gonna be on the bottom. So what I wanna do is I wanna run a reverse loop using decreasing. So we're gonna start at our last row and go all the way to our first row, which is row 11. And of course our row numbers are incremented. So that means every single three rows, we have a new one. So we're going to use step, step minus three, because we're stepping back. So that's what we're gonna do on our loop. We're gonna create a loop for the question row equals the last row all the way to 11. And we're going to step negative three, going back up. First thing what I wanna do is I wanna take that, whatever that row number here, and I wanna put it into a variable called question database row. It's gonna go in this variable and it's gonna come directly from the O and the question row. Then what I wanna do, now that I have the database, I can delete it from our question database. So what it's gonna do inside our quiz questions, it's gonna delete those. So it's gonna remove 106, then it's gonna remove 105 and so on and so forth. It's gonna remove all of those. So, and it's gonna go in reverse order. Very, very important, okay? I've made that mistake a few times where I forget and it just totally messes up your data. If I delete these, it just, it basically rows don't get deleted that should be deleted. So always go in reverse and you're good to go. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna loop those and delete all the data. Okay, great. Then what I wanna do is I wanna clear any existing data. So what I'm gonna do all the way starting on H11. Now these numbers do not get cleared out. They're always gonna stay there, those question numbers. They're only displaying though for data. So if I add some data in here, that question number is going to display. Now, how do we do that? Well, we do that with conditional formatting. And if we go into the conditional formatting and we manage the rules, we can see that it's a simple rule based on the value of H50. This one's H50, but you can see this particular rule applies to a lot of different cells. So that's how Excel uses it, but it works really well. So if basically H, 
44 or any of the corresponding rows is empty, then we know it's going to also make it. Now, this one says age 50, but it works just fine. So as you can see, right, it works just fine. So basically all we need to do, and the reason we have those cells like that is because we actually copied and pasted it, especially when we don't have contiguous rows like this, it's very easy to just simply copy it. So we create one rule and then we just copy the formats to the next one and the next one and the next one. And that's how we can copy that conditional formatting for the preceding rows. Okay, so that means when we remove data, we see that that number is hidden. Now that number is simply the number above. So it's simply G50 plus one. So that's all we did. We started out at one and we just use a formula. Okay, that's gonna show or hide numbers based on the data that is in here, which is going to be really helpful. Okay, so now that we understand we've deleted all those rows, we wanna clear the contents of all the cells. We don't wanna clear out column G, right? Because our questions remain. We only wanna start at column H. We've cleared out all the data. We're gonna set the quiz and we wanna set some of those variables. This string variable called quiz name, we're gonna set it from H4. The quiz description is coming directly from H6. The difficulty level here will be in L, and then we have the question count. How many questions do we can do that? This is a long variable, it's gonna come directly from N4. I wanna know the number of those questions. And of course, the category is string variable coming from J4. I also wanna check if to make sure that they have the required fields. I cannot generate a new quiz unless I've got at least the quiz name and a quiz description. So I wanna make sure that both of them do not are not empty. So if the quiz name equals empty, or the quiz description equals empty, we're gonna let the user know, please make sure to add in a quiz name and a quiz description. And we're gonna exit the sub out. I also wanna make sure they've put in a difficulty level and of course the number of questions. So if either one of those variables are empty, we are going to then let the user know that difficulty level or the question number are required. So we've put the questions between one and 30 and I put the difficulty level between one and 10. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to build that question. Remember we had a question inside our option here and that question was, let's see right here, that question was right here. That's called a prompt. So what I need to do is I need to create a prompt, but I wanna make sure that that prompt is very specific so that the results that we get are the same every single time. So what we need to do is we need to train ChatGPT, the API, exactly how we want the data back. So we're gonna build a prompt. So the prompt is gonna start like this please generate a quiz with how many questions, let's say 10 questions, and right, we want four options per question on the topic of, what is the topic? It's the name of the quiz. And then I'm gonna put a colon, and then I'll put the quiz description. So here we have here, so we're gonna say, please create a 10, 13 question quiz on the subject of English grammar with the description of create a quiz on English grammar for sixth grade student. So in that case, that would be that prompt. Okay, so we're up to this point here. Now what I wanna do is I wanna set a difficulty level and prompt continues and the difficulty level of the difficult level out of 10 with 10 being the most difficult. You could put challenging, probably word challenging. The quiz should include both questions and answers in table format. That's very, very important, table format. And we're gonna continue on with this prompt. Each question should have four options, A, B, C, and D. So I kind of reiterated there. So here I've got four options. Here I've got four options. I've put it twice to ensure that that's what we get. Options A, B, and C. And the only the value, I should put it and only, let's put that, only the value of the correct answer in the final column. Use the following format. So not only am I telling it what I want, I'm telling it exactly what format that I want. So here's the format that I want. I want the first column to be question number one, and I want it separated by these pipes or straight lines. Then I want option A, one, option B, option C, option D. So I want the four options. Then I want the correct answer, then a brand new line. So I'm telling it exactly what I want, exactly how I want it to look like. Then we're gonna give it another sample, question two. So question one, question two, option A. So here we have question two, and then we're gonna give it some new lines, and then we we'll say question, option, option. So we're just basically saying, I want it to continue like that until we have all the data. Then we're gonna say, please provide the quiz with the question count questions. Again, I'm adding it again. I wanna know how many questions and correct answers in table format as shown above. So we're reiterating that. This was unnecessary. I can remove it. That was some additional prompt information I was working with. Now we wanna add the language in. Now it's assumed that the answers 
English. However, if the user has chosen something other than English, I want to add on to that prompt. So with the language, now I've created a named range for that language, and it's called language. So if we take a look here, it's called language, right? So if, and I can use the brackets to extract that information here, brackets here, if the language doesn't equal English, then, and the language doesn't equal empty, I want to make sure it's not empty, then what I want to, I want to add to the prompt. So we're adding on the prompt equals the prompt, and I want to put a period, then two spaces. Please make sure responses are, are in, should put are in, speaking of English vocabulary, are in certain language. In, let's say, Spanish or whatever language you put here, German, French, whatever language. So that means we can have quizzes in any kind of language with this statement. So whatever language we put here will be the language of the answers. That's one of the reasons this is so powerful. Okay, so now we're going to define our API key based on D4. Okay, we have an API key in D4 here. We want the model in D5, temperature in D6, and I want the language. This isn't unnecessary. I think we've already defined that up here. Make sure we have. That's kind of weird, huh? Right? Let's take a look because the language should be defined above that. I'm just going to move it above. I thought it was here already because how I don't see how that works. <laughs> language got to be up here. I'm going to bring that language up above it. I want the language because the language is part of the prompt. So we want to make sure that we bring it all the way up here just to make sure there's no other. I'm going to bring that right here. Okay, so then we temp. Then we want to, I want to set an initial question row. As we create brand new questions, I need to set that initial row. That initial row is right here on the top of that row 11. So our first question is going to be on row 11. So we're setting this long variable called question row number 11. Then we're going to build the prompt. The prompt, again, I want to make sure if there are any, I want to look for any quotation marks and replace them with the backslash and quotation marks. This is basically a readable JSON format. Any new lines that are in our prompt, which shouldn't be, I want to make sure that they're replaced with backslash n. This means this is a readable new line or this is a readable quotation mark, readable in JSON format. So we just kind of have to replace this to make sure that the format is understood by the API. Okay, now we're ready to send that information to ChatGPT. We're going to set the OXML HTTP. We're going to create that object here. Then we're going to open, we're going to create a post. This is a post type. Here is the link. This comes directly from our ChatGPT API. We're going to set that to false. We're going to create that JSON body. Now that body is going to include a few things. It can include that model that we built, that model, the prompt that we built, the temperature that we put, and we're going to set the max tokens to 3,500. There's, there's a limit of about 43 total. Okay, so that's going to be sufficient. So that's what we're going to request. That's the request body that we want to get. It's going to all that built into a single line. Okay, the only other thing that we have that's not built is the API, and that comes in a header row. So the first header row, we're going to set the content type to JSON. That's important. And then the second type of header is going to be the authorization, what gives us our API key. This is unique to just us. All right, then we are ready to send it out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uncomment this out so we can see exactly what it looks like that we're sending. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to send all that to ChatGPT. We're going to get a response back. It's going to be in this format called response. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the code right here and I'm going to put in, because I want to see what show you what that looks like, debug dot and then print and then I want to put that response, okay? What does that response look like in its natural form? Okay, so let's choose, let's just choose five questions so that it's not so big and let's go ahead and generate that quiz, right? So we're going to click generate. It's going to do all that. It's got data already, so it's going to say yes, we want to erase it. It's going to be a little quicker with the five questions. So it's going to generate and then it's going to stop the code, right? We've stopped it right at a certain point. So we want to make sure it's stopped there. Okay, so what does it look like? It's been stopped right here. So what I want to do is I want to show you what it's been sent so far. We're going to go inside the view. We're going to look in the immediate window with those debugs. We're going to take a look. We're going to see the prompt and that, wow, we got a lot of information here. You know what, let me just, so this is what was sent here. Please generate a quiz with five questions. I'm gonna get rid of everything else, just to not confuse you. Okay, let's clear that out. This is our prompt. So when we print the JSON body, here's the JSON body, it starts here, okay? And it ends right here, so this is it right here. This is what we sent. Please generate a quiz with five questions and four options per of English grammar, create a quiz on English grammar, sixth grade student and difficulty level of five out of 10. 
with 10 being the most difficult, the quiz should include quite Okay, so you, you understand that. Here's the format. We don't need to go over it again. So you see all the top. Okay, great. So please make sure response are in English. This probably shouldn't be there because it's English language. So that's what I think I'll have to fix that. You notice that? It should automate. It shouldn't be there because it should be, but it's okay. It cannot hurt, right? But if it was different, it would change it to different language. Okay, so now what did we get back? So what we got back is this starting right here. Okay, so basically it's a lot of information, right? We have our questions and information here. So we're going to start it right here. This is the most important part here after that. After this text is what we want to see. So let's take a look at the actual answer. Here's our first question. Which of the following words is a verb? Then we have one, two, three, four. Okay. And then we have C. C is our answer. Okay. So we need to move that in. Okay. Again, our next question. Which of the following sentences is a compound sentence? One, two, and then three and four. And then our answer. Our answer is in a letter format, which we're going to have to convert. Okay. That's okay. So we kind of see how it goes. But what we don't want. So notice how every time we have a new answer, it's, it's separated by the end. So our delimiter is backslash n, as we can see here. But what I don't want is the first few lines. I don't want this and I don't want this, right? So we're really going to start out at probably two, the second. So our first one, when we use an array, I don't want this. I don't want all this. That's the first line. I don't want this. I only want to start out really here. So how do we get that information? Well, the first thing what we want to do and start to answer is I want to separate. I want to get rid of everything to the left of this. Now, where does it end? Now, when it ends, I want to look for something like, if you've been following our trainings in ChatGPT, you see that this is the last part. This may be familiar. So basically, everything after this, we don't need. So everything in the middle is what we need. Okay, so we're going to continue with our code now. I'll just run it, okay? And then we're going to see what that does. So what I'm going to look for some conditions. If the response contains you didn't have an API key, we're going to let the user know. If the response contains incorrect API key, we're going to let the user know if it's maximum content length. Maybe it's too big. If we request 100 questions, we'd probably get something like this. Then you have maximum content length. Please click the history and move forward. Let's get, I'm going to put choose less questions. Okay, because I'll probably that's probably it. If it gets a maximum content length question. Okay, less number of questions. No, I think I could use the English language test number of questions all right if we've exceeded your current quota that means maybe your api or you don't have any more money left on or something like that so we're going to let the user know okay so this is where we're going to debug print the response we've, we've done that twice already so we don't need that twice we can get rid of this here okay so what we want to do is we want to kind of parse that answer right what do i mean by that basically we want to get rid of whatever we don't need remember i said we saw that we looked for text, right? Our first part of it was text. Right now it's twice, right? Because we had debug twice. I want to remove everything to the left of that. So if we take a look inside here is uh, right about here is where I want to remove. So this text here, I want to remove everything to the left of that. So that's what we're going to start out. So we need to get the right of that. And we're just basically, this is going to remove everything that from there. So this is going to basically, this line of code will remove everything from that. Then what I want to do is I want to remove everything to the right of this here. Okay, so if we take a look inside index, I want to remove everything to the right of that. So this time we're going to look for the word index, index. So we're looking for that and I'm going to remove everything to the right of that. So that's going to leave us with everything in the middle. And that's going to be put in a string called parsed answer. So everything up to that point is now in a string. And now what I want to do is I want to check to see if the first two characters equal these brand new lines, then I want to remove them. Sometimes they use these first two news like, like uh, right here. So basically you're just removing some information that we don't want, like these two new lines. Okay. But this is in character. So we could probably do it also, but what if it includes these also this, I want to remove these. You see this part right here. I want to remove that too. We don't need that. So we're going to remove it. So what I'm going to do, parse to answer, replace, I'm taking, I'm looking for this and I'm replacing it with nothing. Remove the initial library. So we're taking, I don't need this part. So that's going to leave us with this question, right? So we have, well, let's go back here, here. I'm going to highlight just this part here. So that's going to leave us with this. I don't want that. Okay. That's our first line. Notice our first line is here right until we get to this end. That's our first line. What does our second line look like? Our second line looks like this. And I really don't want that either. So what I really want to do is I want to start at that third line. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to create an array and we're going to separate that array. Our delimiter is going to be by backslash n. And I'm going to skip the first two. This also, if there's a period it starts with, it's going to remove that. Sometimes I saw a period. So what I want to do is I want to take and separate all that data in array. We're going to use a parsing. We're going to use the split command. We're going to take all that and we're going to split it using this the pipe backslash n. So notice that every single new line begins with that because that's what we've told it to do. So every time we have a new question, we're going to get this. So basically, I want to parse it. And what we want to do is I want to determine the last. So once we have that array, we're going to put it in this variable called question data. I want to determine what is the last, how many are there? I'm not going to assume that it's 10, like if we ask for 10 questions, but I really want to use it based on the data. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that array and we're going to use the last variable, the last array, which is the U bound, is the upper bound of that array. So this would be around 10 or probably 11 because it adds few for the headers. So now what I want to do is for question number, equals zero to the last question number. All right, very good. All right, I just reran the code again. I got some brand new answers here, and these don't include the header. So generally, sometimes they didn't, but in this case, it could have noticed that, look, let's take a look at this one. They should include which of the following. So this one here doesn't include it. So that's perfect. That's exactly what it does not include those headers, those lines. All right, so let's continue on with the code. So once we have them, we're gonna run a loop. For the question number equals zero, to the last question number, to the last question number. So we want to loop through all of the question numbers right here. I want to extract all the information in a single question. And we're going to use that in another array. It's going to be called the options text. So what is that going to do? It's going to put everything in a text. So let's take a look inside here. It's going to bring starting all from, let's say from this, right? all the way to here. Which of the following sentences is a compound sentence? I like to read, I went to the store, she was happy, he was tall and they. So all this is complete. We have the question, we have the one, two, three, four options, and we have the answer. It's gonna put it all directly inside a string called option text. I'm gonna remove any spaces that might be there. It's gonna be called option data here. We're gonna split it. I wanna split it. Notice I have to split that because each one of those are separated by a space and the pipe and the space. So we want to separate. Again, we're then creating a brand new array called option data here. And we're splitting it by those questions. So if we take a look inside here, we see I want then one, two, three, four, five, six. So again, let's take a look. One, two, three, four, five, and lastly, the answer. So six, we're separating into six different sections. Then we're going to loop. Now our first one always starts with a zero because in array, our first data starts in a zero. So that means we're gonna run a loop from zero to five. This is all of our six options. And we're gonna separate, again, I wanna separate each one. I wanna separate the question, option one, two, three, and four. And we're gonna put that into a string. So that's gonna be called the option text. And of course, I want to remove any spaces around those, any unnecessary spaces we're going to use trim. Now, so we're going to start out with that option data. So our first one's going to be zero. That's our question. Then our second one is going to be one. That's our first option and so on and so forth, all the way to five, which is our answer. If the option row is zero, we know it's a question, right? We always know our question comes first. Here's the, this is the zero value, the first one. So we know if it's the first one, where are we going to put that? I'm going to put that directly inside h column h and whatever the row is okay so we're going to take a look inside that so that's going to go in h and the question row remember we're starting that question row it started on 11 and we're going to be incrementing that by three it's going to go up by three that is going to take our question so this is only if it's a question question text okay so what if it's an option right only zeros if it's one through four one two, three, or four, we know that it is an option, right? Our options are going to go where? One, two, three, or four. They're going to go in specific columns. What column is our first one going to go in for? Equals column, okay? So our column eight, right? So our first one's going to go in eight, nine, 10, and 11. Okay, so continuing on, we want to create those four options. So we know if it's one of those four options, it has to go inside one of those columns. And what is the row? Well, the row is going to be whatever the row is plus one. It's going to be the second row down. Okay, so we want to know it's going to be an eight. So if I know that option one is going to go in column eight, how do I do it? I just add seven. Option two is going to go in column nine and so on and so forth. So we're going to add seven to that. 
so how do we get that in there so our first we can use cells because we're adding the option the question row so what is the row the question row is here but plus one we want it one row down so we need to add one to the question and what is the option row our first column our, the column itself is going to start in eight so that means option when we're at one we want it in column eight when we're at two nine and so on and so forth we're going to add that option text in there that's going to add the individual options all four into that right here else what if it's an answer so that means it's not zero it's not one through four it is five if it's five the answer where are we going to put the answer we're putting the answer in column m and one row down from there so this is the main row here the question row one row down from the question row so if it's an answer okay what we're going to be doing but i have to change it here's a little bit of tricky right if we take a look in the answers let's take a look at the answer the answer is a the answer is b i don't want a and b here and c i don't want that i want the actual right i want the actual answer how do we get that now to get that actual answer what we want to do is just convert it right so we know that if it's a i'm going to use the ascii character what is that equals character character there we go 65 let's do that 65 so we know that 65 is an a if i know the character if a is character 65 right so what i want to do is i want to turn that a into a one or the b into a two or the c into a three so how do we know that if we know it's character 65 if i extract that character out of it i know it's 65. so how do i know if i subtract 64 from it i know we're going to get to one so i'm kind of converting the character number into a numerical number so the answer number remember if it's let's say this is a right for the answer so that means this is 65 the, the asc is the same as the character ascii character number it's going to be 65 for a if i subtract 64 we're going to get one if it's b it's going to be 66 and i'm going to get two so our answer number is going to be anywhere from one to four so now what we want to do is I want to know I want to take it so whatever we've put in here let me generate that quiz again it doesn't look right okay so now what we want to do is we want to convert the letter to the number and then the number is going to correspond to the column this is column eight nine ten so how do we do that I want to get that I want to extract whatever the option is here and put it here in the right one so to do that what we need to do is we have the answer number already one two three or four and now what we want to do is we just get the question row number one we're going to take whatever is in our question row plus one and the answer number plus seven if the answer number is one meaning a that means in column number eight column number eight is here okay column number nine ten and eleven so we're simply taking that answer number the column whatever's in there and we're placing it in the answer so again all I'm going to do is just look for whatever's the right column and I'm going to place that directly in here so if there is a we're going to turn a into this one b c and d so that's all we have to do inside the code okay great and we're just simply going to loop through that and as we increment the question rows the question rows start at 11 then they go to 14 then they go to 17 and so on and so forth we want to increment them a little bit at a time three rows at a time so we're going to increment the quiz row three rows and we're going to loop through these so first we're looping through the options right we're looping through all those options one through four zero through five right for the five questions we're going to get the question the four options and the answer then we're going to loop we're adding them we're going to move on to the next question so that's all we have to do to load in i know it's a little bit tricky but feel free to go over this code a few times right i've been through this before like parsing tables but everything's a little bit different so that is how we get all the data in here okay great so we've covered that we know how to get the, the information here but how do we save it when i click save I want to make sure that that gets updated so if i create a brand new quiz our first macro i want to then clear out all the information and i want to make sure that we're going to clear out any selected quiz id that might be in b4 so that's the first macro that we're going to go over inside our module called quiz save load macros here we're going to scroll all the way to the top let's go over this one right here quiz new i'm going to move this one to the top because i want to quiz new right because that's the first one I want to go over I just want to go in a little order so I'm going to take that I want to put that right at the top here and then we're going to go over a few others okay so quiz new all I'm going to do is just pretty much clearing out a bunch of fields nothing more than that it's relatively simple okay I also want to have something that's going to then 
create a brand new or load a quiz. How do I load it, right? And I create these categories. So we'll go in order. The first thing what I want to do is I want to determine all the categories and I want to put them right here. If we take a look inside our quiz data, we've got a bunch of categories here. What I really want is I want a unique list of those categories and I want to place them directly here. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do that for this macro called load categories. Now, how does this macro run? This, if you'll notice, this macro seems to run when we do a few things. One, when we save a quiz, it's going to reload it. And also, when I make a selection, it's going to reload it. So how do we make that happen? Well, I'll show you that in a moment. But when I want that to happen, when I want to refresh those categories, how does it happen? Well, the first thing what we want to do is I want to clear out. Notice, remember, we have a selected row located right here inside B7. I want to clear that selected row. I want to keep the word all categories here, but I don't want to delete everything else. Okay, and again, you're going to see this macro run mostly when we save a quiz, because if there's been any update, change, or addition to any categories, we want those changes reflected in this. So that's when that macro is gonna run. We go into that macro, we're gonna take a look, it's called quiz load unique categories. Again, we're gonna be clearing all the existing. We're gonna be focusing on the quiz database. I wanna put a focus on this database right here. And simply, I want all the unique categories to load up here. Now keep in mind that any sheet, we're gonna run an advanced filter for this. Now, if I just want something unique, just the unique, right? I don't want any criteria. Let's say if I do run something specific, I have some very specific criteria here on this sheet because I only want math and I want only those ones with math. However, if I want something unique, I need to make sure we delete any criteria. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So first I'm gonna determine the last row of this. We're gonna determine the last row. I need to know the last row on this sheet. In this case, it's 14. And then what I wanna, if the last row is less than four, we're gonna exit the sub. That means there's no data. I'm gonna delete the criteria. Now, if this criteria doesn't exist, we're gonna receive an error. So we've wrapped it in on error, resume next, and on error go to zero. And that means basically we're deleting criteria. What does criteria look like? Well, it might look like something like this. If we go into the name manager, we're gonna see something like this. So basically this criteria that we are deleting, it is this. These are criteria that are automatically created when we run an advanced filter inside VBA, and it is this that we are going to be removing. So this is what we're gonna be doing. So it's just the one that's associated with this sheet because it is not needed when we run an advanced filter without criteria. Now, if I run an advanced filter with criteria, the current one will be replaced by the new one. So there is no need to delete it. However, we are gonna run our advanced filter. Now, I'm only focused on those categories, which is in column D. So we only need to focus on this one. So we're gonna run an advanced filter from D to the last row, and we're just gonna have the results come in here, and it's gonna get us all the unique names. So range D through D3, and D in the last row, we're gonna run an advanced filter. There's no criteria. If we had criteria, it would be right here. And we're gonna copy it to K2. K2 is the header, and that's where we wanna copy it to. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna determine the last row. If that last row, of course, is less than three, we're gonna exit the sub out. That means there are, are no categories. However, if there are values, I'm gonna take all these values and I'm gonna place them directly in, so, inside here, starting with uh, D6 and all the way down here. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna determine that last row here inside column A. Once I know that last row, we're gonna check to see if it is less than three. I did wanna support the, sort them alphabetically, so that was kind of important. If there's just one row, meaning the last row is four, there's no reason to sort it. However, if there is more than one, I would like to sort it alphabetically to make it a little easier on the user. If there's a lot of categories, they could quickly and easily find the category they're looking for if it is sorted alphabetically. So to do that, we're gonna use with sort. We're gonna clear any sorts that are there. We're gonna add a key that's based on K3. That is our first one, and that's what we're gonna have. Then what we're gonna do is we wanna assort it ascending. A to Z is what we wanna sort alphabetically. We're gonna set the range from K3 to K in the last result row. That'll set the range, and then we're gonna apply that sort. So this is going to sort our categories alphabetically. Once they're sorted, we can then bring them over into our quiz generating sheet, starting with rows D and D through the last row. Now our row starts here on six, our row starts here on three, so we need to compensate for that difference by adding three. So that's how we're gonna bring our categories over. So bring categories 
over to quiz generator sheet. So now we have all that in there. So we, and we're gonna bring that over. So now what I want to do is I want to know, I'm gonna take a look inside our quiz generator sheet right here. I'm gonna take a look at this category here. If it's found, right, if there's something inside J4, I want to then automatically select it. And how do I select it? I can select it by simply putting the row here. If I change this to seven or I change this to eight, it's automatically going to show. So what I want to do is I want to look inside this column. If English is found inside anywhere in here, I want to take whatever row it's found on and I want to put it directly inside here, B7. So that's exactly what we're going to do, B7 putting in actually six. So, so B7, so six is the row that we would found. So it's looking for that. So how do we do that? Well, we can do that with a line of code, but if it is not found, it could create an error. So we also want to wrap it in on air resume next and on air go to zero. So the quiz gen B7, the value of that is going to be what is going to, we're looking inside this range, quiz generator D6 through D in the last results row. So we're looking in this range, what are we looking for? We're looking for whatever's in J4. I'm looking for whatever is right here. If it's found, I want to add the row and I want to look in the values and whole. We're adding the row. And then we're going to add that row directly to B7. So great. So we have that. So that's how we load the unique categories. Now, when I make a selection on a category, what do I want to do? I want to load all the quizzes that are associated with that, and that is another macro. That is the next macro called load quiz list. Now, this macro appears when? When we make a selection on a category. A selection means a selection change. So let's take a look inside that and see how that happens. So that's gonna be inside our quiz generator here, and we're gonna go into selection change. So when the user makes a selection change from D5 to D99, and I wanna make sure that D contains a value, then what we're going to do is whatever row they've made a selection, I'm going to put that into B7. That's going to trigger the conditional formatting. I also want to know if the target row is five. If it's five, we're going to do something a little bit different. If it's five, I want to make sure that our criteria is empty. And what's our criteria? Our criteria is right here. Again, we're going to run an advanced filter, and I want to know if there's any category, I'm going to list all the quizzes associated with a category. If it is blank, then we're going to list all of the quizzes regardless of the category. So if I put math in here, I'm going to take that category and put it directly inside M3. And I'm going to list on run in the macro. It's going to show only those quizzes that are associated with the category of math. Okay, great. So we understand that. Now what we're going to do is if the target was five, then I just want to clear the contents of M3, right? We don't want any value inside M3. However, if it is not five, meaning six, seven, or eight, five meaning the row that they've selected, five. However, if it's six, seven, or eight, or whatever, then I want to take whatever the value that they've selected, and I want to put it directly inside M3. So, however, else, quiz M3 equals the target value. So, place criteria. We're placing that criteria. We're getting it ready for our advanced filter. Place criteria. Let's do category criteria because that's category criteria. Okay, so now that we have that category criteria, well, I want to move on and run that macro. Now, this is the macro that's going to run next, and it is also the macro that we're going to go over. That's the next one. So inside this macro, remember, we already went over the categories here. Now we're up to the next one called quiz list. Again, I want to make sure that we're clearing out. So not only do I want to clear out any selected row here located in B8, any selected quiz row, I also want to clear out any data. And I want to make sure not only to clear out column E, but I want to clear out the associated quiz IDs located in column F. So we're going to clear out everything from E all the way through F and on down. So B8 all the way through E and then F and on down. Clear the existing categories and put and quiz ID. So, so we want to clear both of those out. Okay, focusing again on the quiz database, we're going to run another advanced filter. Now, this time we don't have to delete any criteria because we have a criteria right here. So I want to return the quiz name and the quiz ID. So I want to make sure that the quiz name and the quiz ID are part of the original data. So we're going to focus on columns A and B, and we might use uh, categories, quiz and categories. So we need to include column D as well. So that is exactly what we're going to be doing inside our code. All the way from A3 through D in the last row, 
We're going to run that. Our criteria is going to be M2 through M3. And the results are going to be O2 through P in the last results row. Okay, the last results row here. If the last results row is less than three, we're going to get the sub. Again, I want to sort these alphabetically just as we did before based on O3. We're going to be ascending. Then we're going to run O3 through P. Remember, I'm basically just taking, I'm going to sort these. I would like them sorted alphabetically by the first. So it's going to take those numbers first and sort them alphabetically so that our quizzes are sorted. Once we, if there's only one row, only one row of data, we're going to skip to sort, sort and go right here. Okay, great. So now what I'm doing, I'm ready to do is I'm ready to bring this data over here. So we're going to take that inside the generate quizzes, bringing the information from all the way from, let's say, E all the way down there. So E through F, E5 through F, and the last results row plus two. Our rows start in five here. They come from three, so we need to add two. It's gonna come from O3. So basically all we're doing is taking the information that's displayed here and we're bringing it directly inside our quizzes here. Now what happens? So now when I make a selection change, I wanna load that up, okay? So that's all we're doing here. So that's just gonna bring in that. So also what I wanna do, just like we did before, when I load these in, I wanna make sure that we, if we find it, let's say movies and TV, if I select movies and TV, I wanna make sure that whatever is selected here is found. Again, so I've selected, let's, let's choose category. So notice, that when I run this macro, you see 80s movie, TV, and trivia. And if you see here, nothing's selected. But if I go here, it's selected because it's found. So I want to look for the row. If it is found here, I want to place that row directly inside of B8, just as we did before. So how do we do that? So as long as B4 does not equal empty, because I'm looking for, I'm looking to make sure that there's a quiz ID, I'm going to take the name and I'm going to look for the name and I'm going to look for it inside this column. If it is found, I'm going to put the row there. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing what we want to do inside B8, I'm going to look inside what F all the way through F in the last result. So basically we're looking through all the quizzes and I'm looking for whatever's inside B4. If it's found, I'm going to return the row. If it's not found, it's going to create an error. So therefore, we've wrapped an on and resume next and on and go zero. Okay, great. That's how we load these. When we select them, and that's how we refresh the quiz list. What about when we want to save it? When I want to save a quiz, of course, there's a macro that is tied to that button there. If we take a look inside here, assign macro, we're using the macro called quiz save. When we edit it, that is the next macro that we're going to be going over. We're, again, we're focused on the quiz generator. We're going to set the quiz name, the description, and the quiz number. The, the question number is going to start at a one. Right? I want to loop through all the question numbers. I want to make sure that every single question number has a number associated with it. We're going to start out with one. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop. I'm going to save all this information here to our quiz database, making sure that it's saved here. And to do that, we have some data mapping. All right, back inside the code, we also want to make sure that we have required fields, right? We need a quiz name and a quiz description. If either one of them are blank, right? If we don't have a quiz name, quiz description, we need to let the user know. So we'll do that if the quiz name or quiz description is empty. Then, of course, we're going to let the user know, please make sure to add a quiz name, quiz description. Also, again, we need to make sure that uh, we also have the difficulty level and the question number between. So we're going to let the user know if either one of them are blank. All right, now what I want to do is I want to determine, is this a new quiz or is it an existing quiz? If it's a new quiz, of course, B5 will be empty as we add a new quiz. Remember, we're using that match formula, so it's going to come up empty because there's no quiz ID. So we know that if B5 is empty, we need to assign a brand new quiz ID. That new quiz ID is going to be located in B6 using our max formula. So we're going to take that brand new quiz ID and I'll place it directly inside B4. I'm also going to take that brand new quiz ID and place it in the first available column, column A, in the first available row here. However, if it is an existing quiz, then I know that I can extract the row number directly from B5, and then I'll just make updates accordingly. But we have data mapping, I was about to say, so that data mapping is going to help us map the data. So we know that the quiz name is in H4, the description is in H6. So if we take a look here, so if we take a look here, we see H4, it contains that quiz name, H6 contains that description. And so we've mapped every single field. So simply all we need to do when we save it, all I need to do is just run a loop from two all the way to the last column and simply take whatever's in H4 and place it in the selected row. Take whatever's in H6, place it in the corrected row there. 
All right, so that's exactly what we're going to do as long as we determine whether it is a new quiz or is an existing quiz. If it is a new one, B5 is going to be empty. And so then we're going to determine the quiz row to be the first available quiz right here. So that's our first available row. So we would know in this case it is 15. Also, what I want to do is I want to take that quiz ID that that generated one from the max and place it directly inside B4. And that's only if it's in a new quiz. So if it's a new one, we're going to do just that. And then also we're going to take that brand new one and also place it inside column A. So that's what we're going to do. These three things. If it's new, if it's an existing, all I need to do is extract the row from B5. Okay, so continuing on, we're going to set the quiz ID into a variable, and that's going to come from B4, regardless if it is new or is existing. And then what we're going to do is we're going to run a loop from 2 to 8, as mentioned earlier, from 2 all the way to the last column, 8, and we're going to simply take whatever's in these fields and place them in the associated row. So for the quiz row equals 2 through 8. We're going to take whatever is inside. We're looking for that range, H4, H6. It's going to come from row 1 of our quiz database and inside the associated column. So this is where it's going to come from, that range, H4, H6. And we're going to take the value, whatever's in the value, and we're going to place it directly in the associated row and the associated column inside our quiz database. This is going to allow us to quickly save all of the associated data in these top fields and save them inside the database associated row down below. Once we have that, we also want to save or update the answers. We've got some selected answers that we need to either save or update all the answers. Now, if it's a brand new answers, we know that there's going to be no row associated, right? So if I create a new quiz here and then we add new answers, there's going to be no row. However, if it's an existing one, we know we can save those. All we need to do is we want to look to see if there's a row that's associated. If there's no database row, we're going to sign a brand new one. If there's an existing one, we're going to use the existing one. But we need to determine the last row. What is the last row of data? So to determine that, the last question row is going to be based on column H. So I'm going to pull that. So H, we see that based on column H, our last row is 39. So we can loop through that. Okay, so continuing on, we determine the last row. If the last question row is less than 11, we know to exit the sub. That means there are no questions. So for the question row equals the last, we're going to start from 11 to 11. We're going to step three, okay? So we're starting at 11. We're going to the last row, which is here, or here in this case, and we're going to just basically, we are going to step three. That means it's going to go from 11 to 14 to 17 and so on and so forth. So that is the beginning of our loop right here. And then what we want to do is I want to determine has it been saved before. So we're going to look in column O. If O is empty, we know it has been not been saved. If it is, has a, a row associated, we know it has been. So if O is empty, then we need to get the first available row. Now it's coming from our quiz questions. Now our quiz questions are located right here. So our first available row would be 99. So if it is a new one, we are going to then place that row directly inside here. And also, we're going to set the question database row to the first available row. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to place it. We're going to set the formula. I want to also set a formula. If we take a look inside our quiz questions, right, we have our row formula located in column J. Now, this is only for new. We don't need to keep updating this. We only have to place it once. So we're going to put that formula in column J, and it's going to be equals row. So that's all we need to do here. Then what we want to do is we want to set the question database row. Again, that brand new row, if it's 99, I need to place it directly inside column O in the associated row. So if I added more ones, it would be placed directly here. Okay, that is only for new, right? It's only for brand new. What if it's an existing question? If it is an existing question, all I need to do is extract the database row from whatever's in column O. So we're going to extract database row. Okay, so now that we have that, we can then everything else we're going to do regardless. Now, this isn't data mapped. So once it's not data mapped, I probably could have. This is what it looks like when it's not data mapped. It's a lot of, you see, a lot of here code. Data mapping helps a lot out. So the first thing we're going to do in column A is I'm going to put that quiz ID. So if we see column A is going to take on the quiz ID, the quiz name and the question are going to go in B and C respectively. So B is going to take on the name, C is going to take on the question, 
Then we're going to put the question number. Now this is going to go up by one for every single question. The question number is going to go inside column D. Then we're going to put options A through D all the way in the next remaining columns. And lastly, the answer is going to go in column, column I from column M. It's going to come directly from the associated rows. So it's coming directly from our quiz. So we're going to cut H, I, J, K, and then M respectively. Okay, so that's where it's all coming from. All right, great. So then we're going to increment the question by one as we create more questions so that we can keep accurate question number. Okay, great. That's all we need to do. Then, of course, we're going to, after we save it, I remember as, I rem as we spoke of earlier, we want to then refresh the categories, right? Every time we want to save a brand new quiz, we may have made a change or added a new category. We want to refresh the macro here to refresh the categories and also refresh the quizzes. So we're going to run both of those macros that we already went over called quiz load unique categories and quiz load list. And then just a message box letting the user know that the quiz has been saved. Great. Okay, so that's how we save it. Well, what do we load it? Now, when we load it, we are going to make a selection change on on a particular quiz and then it's going to load so that's a selection change if we take a look back inside our quiz generator we're making a selection change on quiz selection on e5 through e99 and we need to make sure that e contains a value so when i want to do this i want to look in column f and i want to take whatever particular id that is inside column f i want to place it directly inside b4 so that's the first thing that we're going to do and whatever row we've selected i want to put it inside b8 so b8 is going to take on that target row that's going to trigger the conditional formatting b4 is going to take on the id that's whatever's inside column f and the target row it's going to set the quiz then we're going to run the macro that we're going to go over now called quiz load so it is that macro that we're going to go over here the first thing what we want to do is clear out all the associated fields so when we load a brand new quiz we want to make sure that we've cleared out all of the data in these fields and all the questions so we're going to do that with this line of code here okay great so when we do that we also want to make sure now what is critical when we load once we place that quiz id it's going to certainly calculate that quiz row if for some reason there's uh, something wrong and we have an incorrect id or something b5 will be blank so we certainly need to make sure although it should never happen that b5 contains that row number if it is empty, we need to let the user know to please select a quiz to load. We're going to exit the sub out. We're going to take that whatever's in B5 and put that in a variable called quiz row. Again, we're going to run that loop again. This time it's in reverse. This time I'm taking whatever is inside this row or whatever row and putting it into H4, whatever row that, that is our quiz and putting it into H6, J4. So we're taking whatever's there and putting it in. And we can do that in reverse this time. So this time we're going to take whatever is in that row and that column and we're placing it directly in the cell that's found in row one reverse data mapping there and place that data directly inside our form fields here so that's going to fill out all the fields now we are ready to add in the questions and so when we add in the questions options and answers now all those questions options, and answers are going to come directly from here so again what i want to do is i want to run an advanced filter i only want to know specific uh, options answers from a particular quiz id so if i am loading if i'm loading in quiz id number six it is only the questions associated with id number six so how do we pull that off well we do it with an advanced filter right? so if we take a look inside here the quiz id i've got some criteria this is linked directly to b4 so it's automatically linked to that quiz this is going to be our criteria so i want to extract all of the questions all of these questions options and answers from six and i want to bring them into another list so that list is going to be directly here called results so these are called quiz results i want to put them right here from o all the way through v so how do we do that inside the macro well, again we're going to move a little quicker now we're going to get the last row if it's less than four we're going to exit the sub we're running an advanced filter from columns a through j that is our original data the criteria is m2 i just showed you m2 through m3 that is our criteria and we want the results in o2 through v we're going to determine the last results row based on column o and then if it's less than three we're going to exit the sub i also want to sort these and i want to sort these ascending based on the question number that's very important so that all the questions get loaded in the proper order one being the first 10 being the last so we need to sort it based on column p 
So we're going to do that. If there's only one, for some reason, one question, we can skip out of it. We're going to run a sort based on that P, right, column P. We're going to run it ascending, and we're going to sort the entire range from O3 through V. That's going to sort, apply sort. That's going to sort, let's put a little note here, sort questions based on question number. Okay, good. So we have that. We understand what's going on with that. We're going to set the initial quiz row as 11. This quiz row is our initial quiz. As we add more questions, it's going to increment 3, 11, 3, 14, 17, 20, and so on. Okay, so we're going to start it out at 11. We're going to run a loop for 3 to the last row. So basically, I'm going to be looping through this. 3 all the way to the last row. I'm going to be importing all this information and bringing it inside the questions and also putting that database row inside column O. Okay, so first thing what I want to do is I want to determine, gonna take that quiz question, what is the question that's gonna go in H in the quiz row? Option one is gonna go in H in the quiz row plus one, I, J, and K. So basically, I'm taking these options, these options here, and I'm placing them directly inside the quiz row plus one. So 81, then I'm placing them in directly columns. So this is gonna go in H, i j and k respectively so that's exactly what we're going to do h i j and k lastly that answer is going to come into column m and we want that database row in column o that's very important so we know if we're going to make an update that row is going to be located in column o and it's going to come directly from here this column v that's where it's going to come from column v and we're going to increment the row by three because we're the our quiz data is by three, right? We have every third row, as we had mentioned before. So we're gonna increment that row. Okay, so that's all we need to do to load that quiz. Moving on to the next macro, when I delete a quiz, we wanna let the user know, are you sure you wanna delete this quiz? That's the macro that's tied to this button. Then what we wanna do is I wanna know, has it been saved, right? If I create a new quiz, and I just put some test information in here, and I click delete quiz, and I say yes, all it's gonna do is just clear out everything. It's just gonna basically run to new quiz. We don't need to delete anything in the database because it has not been saved yet. So how do we know if it's been saved yet? B5 is going to tell us because there'll be no row that's associated with there. If B5 is empty, we know it's not saved, and we can skip all of this down here and go directly to not save and just run the macro quiz new which will clear out all the associated fields. However, if it has been saved, I need to get the database row from B5, and I wanna make sure to delete that entire row from the database. I also need to delete all the questions, options, and answers. Again, we're gonna run an advanced filter, very, very similar. We're gonna sort it very, very similar. And all I'm going to do this time in reverse, very, very important. We need to, whoa, 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 skip sort. Okay, that looks good. I want to make sure to delete it. So if we take a look inside that. All right, I did something different here. This is kind of cool. Let me share this with you. So instead of what I don't want to do, instead of deleting this data, so we take a look at this one. So let's say we're going to be deleting the results here. So I'm going to, so this time I'm not going to go in reverse. 34 to 35, I'm going to just clear the contents out. All I'm going to do if it is just basically take this and clear the contents out from A to J. Then I'm gonna resort it again. So that's kind of a nice thing to do, something different. Deleting it could create an issue. For example, if I delete this one, and you see the results are also here. So if I delete this row, I'm also deleting the results. We're looping through the results. That's gonna create an issue. So a better idea would be to just clear the contents out of these fields and then resort the list once we're done, which will remove all of the spaces. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we're gonna go four, three to the last row. We're gonna pull the quiz row. That's gonna come from column V. And I'm gonna clear the contents. I'm not deleting the row. And we're gonna do that through that. The next, we're just gonna basically loop each one out. That's kind of nice. Then what we need to do is we need to clear the blank lines. Clear blank rows okay so how do we clear that first thing i want to do is determine the last results row if it's less than three we're going to exit this up if it just has a single row we're also going to go to no no skip the main data sort which will go down here then all i'm going to do is resort the fields and i'm going to be based it on a4 so basically we're basing it on that quiz id so when i delete it it's automatically going to resort this list thereby clearing those cleared lines and i like that a little bit better than deleting the rows because when you delete the rows we have the potential to delete things that we don't want like here okay all right so that's a little bit safer of a way to do that. So that's all we needed to delete. Okay, great. So that's two out of the three modules that we're going to be going over. We went over the quiz 
data, right? How to get in quiz data. We went over this quiz save and load. We're now we're going to focus on the quiz sheet. This is the sheet that we are going to be focusing on now. Those macros are going to come from the run quiz macro. So we've got some macros that are associated inside here. All right, so let's take a look back to the start. So this sheet, first macro I want to go over is new quiz. Now, if we take a look here, we have some information here also that I'm going to be sharing with you as we go through it. So the first thing is new quiz. When I have a new quiz, I want to make sure that we have a selected student. So we have a drop down list of student names. Names. If I go into the data and then the data validation, we see we have student names and it's based on the student names in our student list. I want to know the row that's associated with that. So we also have a name range for student ID. So what I want to do is I want to run an index for the student ID. Student ID is a named range. Let's go ahead and go look at that quickly. Although you can imagine what that would be. It's just basically an unnamed range for the student ID. So what I want to do is I want to look up the student name and I want to extract the ID and I want to take that ID and I want to place it directly inside B5. We can do that with a formula using the index. We're going to index that student ID. We're going to match based on the student name that's located in E5. If there's an error, it's going to be left blank. Because I want to remember, I want to save, that's important because I want to save both the student and the student ID. When we have those quiz questions, we remember we have, uh, no, 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 quiz results. We have the student ID and the student name. So I want to save both. And same thing in the results. We have the student ID and the student name. So it's important to extract that student ID and put it directly in here. I also have a category here. We've got all of our categories here. If I take a look at data and we go into the data validation here, we see we have quiz categories sorted. So if we take a look inside the database here, we have the quiz categories sorted. It's going to be based on this, all categories, English, math. So it's, that's the range that we're using. We're using this and I've created a name range based on the called quiz categories sorted. Okay. So that is the same range that we're going to be using here for that data validation. Okay, great. So now we have a select quiz. So how do we do that when we select this quiz? Basically what I want is the data validation of all the quiz, but it's not working easy. And why isn't it working? Because if I take a look, I'm going to run an advanced filter. You see that this says all category, but there shouldn't, this shouldn't be here. Why? Because we don't have a category called all categories. So when the user selects all categories, M3 must be blank, right? M3. So let's take a look inside that because that's our next thing. When I make a change to E3, I want something to happen. When I change it to English, all of our English courses here. When I change it to movies and TV, all of our TVs here. But when I change it to all categories, I want to make sure that it's a drop down list, a data validation of all of them. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, that's going to, it's going to start directly on a worksheet change event based on E7. So if I take a look inside our quizzes here and I see E7, we're making a change. So, and E7 is nothing, then what do we want to do? I'm going to dimension the last row as long and the last results rows long. So here's the issue here. M3 equals the target value. Now this works just fine unless it's all categories. But what if it's all categories? Then we need to clear the contents out. So here's what we want to do. If, right, our target dot value equals all categories, then we want to clear the contents out. Then I want to, then I'm going to paste this dot clear content. Else, then target value. Okay, so now if I double click here, now let's take a look at our drop down list. So now we have it all in. See how that works? Because we see that in the quiz data, there's no category now, and it's going to be any quiz without a category. So then what I want to do is I want to create a named range based on the results here. And that named range is going to end up directly inside this list here. That way, if whatever changes here, automatically will appear directly inside here. So now we have only English. So now our English category and our results are right here. So we've created a named range. So if we take a look at the data validation here, we can see what type of data validation is called quiz names sorted. And it's name sorted. It's a dynamic named range based on all that. So if we go into the formulas, name manager, and we go down here to quiz names sorted and tab over, we can see that we're using an offset formula for all the values in that quiz name. And that's going to provide that dynamic data drop down list. So that way, when we use all quizzes, all categories, and there's no category associated, we now have a list of all of those categories. When I make a selection on here, I need a few things. I also want to know that quiz ID. So what I want to do is I want to extract the quiz ID. If 
If we remember correctly, inside the quiz questions, we always need the quiz name, and I want the quiz ID that's associated with that here in the quiz results here. Quiz ID, quiz name, and also in our results, the question results, we also want the quiz ID and quiz name. So quiz ID, just like the student ID, is very important. So we need to extract that. Again, we're going to use the index like we did on the student, quiz ID. We're going to run a match based on what's in E9, quiz names and I want to return the single column. So we're going to return that ID. If there's an error, we're going to leave it blank. So that's going to put that quiz ID directly in B6. All right, very good. So we have that and we understand how that's going to work. So how do we do that? So let's take a quick look inside this code. That's the worksheet change based on E7. When we make a change, what happens? Well, we're going to run that advanced filter focusing on that quiz database, determining the last row if it's less than four. We're going to run that advanced filter based on what's, and we've already went over code exactly the same, so we can move quick, basically running it and then getting the results and putting them directly in here. We don't need the quiz ID in this case. We're looking for the names is all we really need. So our, our results can be O2 through P2, but we really don't use those. And then we're going to take the last results row. We're going to sort it alphabetically based on, I want those quiz names to be alphabetic sorted. We're going to set the range and apply that sort. And then E9, we're going to clear the contents. That's very important because when I make a change to the categories, I want this E9 to be cleared. I want to clear whatever selected quiz and let the user search again. Okay, great. So that's all we have to do on this code here. So there's no selection code change. There's no uh, selection change of it. Great. So what's next? Well, when I click new quiz, I want something to happen. Basically, I want to clear out some of the fields. So let's take a look inside that and we're going to close this out. And the first thing is new quiz. So when we create a new quiz, we need to clear some of those fields out. I want to clear B2 because there's no result. Remember the result, the result is for a quiz. I also want to clear out additionally B7, B9 through B12. Now what's in B7 is our selected question number. We'll get into that a little bit later on and we'll get basically going to clear out the associated fields. I also want to clear out all the way E5, 7 and E9. So we're clearing out those fields as well. Okay, also what I want to do is I want to make sure I've got some group shapes here. I want to make sure I'll be going over some of these shapes, but I want to make sure that this start quiz button is visible. If we take a look at that, it's called start quiz button. Now these are shapes are all in a group. If we take a look inside that group, the group of shapes is called new quiz group. So if I need to specify a specific shape within the group, we need to use group items. This one is called start quiz button. This one is called start quiz icon. And the reason this is important is because sometimes it's a different button. If we take a look here, if we're in the middle of a quiz, right, and I want to go back to the start, I want now look at it. Now it says continue quiz, continue quiz. So we can also continue the quiz here if we want to. So this is a different button. This one's called continue quiz button. So I need to know whether we are on existing quiz or if we're if we've already started a quiz but we haven't finished that quiz we want the words continue quiz however if it's a new quiz we want start so we need to specify that now the macro new start what we want to do is we want to make sure that continue button is hidden we don't want to see that so with the new shape in this group within this group we need to work with some of the shapes within that group we have a button called continue quiz button we don't want to show that we have that continue quiz icon. We don't want to show that, but we do want to show the start quiz button and the start quiz icon, right? So we want to make sure that this start is visible so we can do that. And that's it for this macro new quiz, relatively easy. Now, when we start a quiz, I need to check for some fields. If I try to start this quiz and we haven't selected a student category or quiz, of course, we need to make sure that we have selected both of those. So we do need a student, we do need a category, and we also need, of course, a quiz. So when we click uh, start quiz, we need all of that. Start quiz is the macro that's tied to that button. So the first thing we wanna do is check B5. We wanna make sure what is in B5. B5, of course, is our student ID. If there's no student ID, that means we have not selected a student yet. So B5 is important. Also, if B6 is empty, we need to select from the drop down list. Now, B6 is our quiz ID. We notice that there's no quiz selected, no ID. We need to let the user know to please select a quiz. Okay, now we're going to set some standards. We're going to keep. I want to know how many questions the user has answered. That is going to be 
located let's move this code over a little bit so we can see not that one here but i want to move this one over right here so i want to be able to see both of these at the same time okay so what we want to do b9 i want to make sure the total answered re reset the question answers our total questions answered are located in b9 b9 is going to keep track of how many questions the user has answered i also want to make sure that b7 equals one b7 equals one is the first question we're setting that first question to one setting that initial question and now also new quiz group is false right this is the group right when i this is the same sheet when i want to i want to hide this group if we take a look inside here and we right click and we unhide we see that we've got some so these columns are going to be used for the quiz these columns are going to be used for when we're starting a quiz so i want to basically hide this selection when we're starting a new quiz and i want to hide this selection when, once we've started a quiz and we want to show these so basically we've separated it into two sections so to do that we the new new quiz group must be hidden that is this group we don't want to see that so we're going to click that button we don't want okay also columns d and e we want those entire column the entire columns hidden and we want f through k visible so f through k becomes visible and d through e becomes hidden continuing on i also want there's another group of shape called quiz group and i want to show that visible so when i click start quiz again we're hiding d3 we're showing f through k and i've got a bunch of other shapes here and this all of these shapes are called quiz group quiz group includes the four different option shapes the previous the start the next and it also includes a shape here called question this text box here so all that is grouped in a shape called quiz group and i want that displayed so that's got to be displayed now what i want to do is i want to save or update quiz results right if we're continuing on this if b3 is empty then we need to create a brand new quiz right b3 is our results row are we updating in other words are we continuing a cruise course or is this a brand new one so we can update that if it's a brand new quiz then i want to do is i want to create a brand new quiz right so i'm going to take the next result id here and i'm going to put it directly inside b2 because it's a brand new one and i also want to save that directly on the quiz question so i want to put inside our quiz results let's bring our quiz results over next to the sheet and our results question results so that way we have the quiz sheets we have the quiz results and we have the question results all next to each other so our next result id is going to be 15 so we're going to place that directly in here and that's general information when we create a brand new course so if b3 is empty that is we're going to be called this a new quiz that result row is going to be the first available one quiz database row a9 excel up it's going to be this row 18 that's our first one what about our id our id is going to be 15 using the max formula we're going to take that and we're going to put it directly inside b2 and I'm also going to take it and put it directly inside the first available base right here. Okay, so if it's a new, new quiz, we need to do all of those things. Setting that result ID, putting all that in. If it's an existing quiz, all we need to do is extract the result row from B3. So all I need to do is extract the re result row from B3 if it's an existing. Okay, then what we want to do is I want to save all the information for the result column equals two to seven if we take a look inside the question results we also have data mapping here i've got a bunch of data mapping just as we did so we're going to go from two to seven all these fields b6 e9 all that information is going to be saved inside the row the quiz id the name student student name the number of questions the number of answers and then we have two formulas here that we'll be making updates because it's all the same and we also have two formulas here we'll take a look at some of these formulas we're going to be counting the results based on this this is uh, we're just dividing the total correct minus total of questions in fact i'm going to put if error here if there's an error we just don't want to put empty so we can do that anytime we want to do division we should put there so basically when we create a brand new one we're going to save copy this and we're going to put it down into the new ones so these formulas here the total number correct i'll go over this one when we get to that point okay so basically we're just in this case we're simply basing I want to know how many of the questions results were true so i'm just summing the true based on the quiz id the quiz the quiz name so i want to know how many were true so we're tracking those there so that's what we're going to do inside that okay continuing on with our code so once we determine that we're going to 
loop through all of those codes. Let's put it down here, looping from two to seven. And basically it's gonna take all the information that we want here. Also from, it's gonna take some information from this too. Let's, let's reset that here. Okay, so what we wanna do is I wanna take information back then, I'm resetting that there. Okay, so continuing on, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that we also save some of the information here. Here's some of the information, especially the quiz name. So E9, so all that must be mapped and that's gonna be mapped right here. So you notice that it says E, we have B9, E9 here, the quiz name, B9. We also wanna make sure that B9 and save all the information from here. It's all located directly here using the data mapping. Okay, great, now continuing on. What we want to do is I want to copy the formula down. This is that results formula. So we're gonna do that regardless. So H I, the result row, simply equals formula down here. Another way to do it is simply to copy the formula. I like that better because I think there's an issue with the formula. So what we wanna do here is I'm going to take this formula here and I'm going to just paste it here and I'm gonna top and copy. Okay, and then where do we want it pasted? We want it pasted directly inside this. So this is where we're gonna paste it. We'll use dot paste special, dot paste. I like it, paste special. And then we're just gonna basically be pasting those formulas in here. So how do we get to those formulas? Well, we can do the paste special and then we're gonna equals and then paste all. We don't certainly, we don't want it all. We wanna paste the formulas, Excel paste formulas. Formulas is what we want to paste formulas. And that's all we really want. Copy this formulas. And then we can turn off that uh, dancing answer. We can do that by application dot copy mode equals false. Okay, great. So that's all we have to do. And essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking the quiz results here, taking these formulas, and here's where we can copy that correct formula down and pasting it directly inside here and pasting those formulas directly like that. That's all we're going to be doing here so that there we get accurate results. That looks a little bit better. Okay, so now we have that formula. It's gonna bring it. So basically we're adding all the information to our quiz results and we're putting our formulas in here. So that's gonna keep track of it. Continuing on, now what we wanna do is we want to load in our quiz questions and options. When we have here, I wanna take these shapes here and I wanna load my quiz. That quiz question, I wanna look in, I wanna load it in G4. I wanna put in the options here. And I also wanna put the answer, the corrected answer. I'm gonna put it in a hidden, this is gonna be hidden columns A and B. And I'm gonna put it directly inside B10. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're gonna focus on the question database. The question database, where is that located? That is located right here, the quiz questions. So I've got some additional criteria, quiz criteria here. We are looking for the quiz ID four. That's why that ID is so important. If we take a look at this criteria, it's gonna be based on quiz sheet B6. If we look back over to our quiz sheet and we're reminded that the quiz ID is located in B6, it is that index that's based on that quiz name that was in E9. So we have our quiz ID. We're gonna run an advanced filter based on our quiz data. And I only want the quiz, I only want the results associated with quiz ID four directly here. So we're gonna run through all the data. Once we have that, I want the question, the question number, the option one through four, the answer in the row. So I want all of that data to come inside here. So how are we going to do that? Excuse me, here. So I got a different, these are the same options quiz results here. So I'm going to put it in X through A. I just wanted them different. I don't want them. These are the same results that we that filled up our, when we generated quizzes, these are the results that filled up here. These are the results that, that we're going to use for the quizzes. So those results, I just wanted in a different section to not confuse them. Like I just got confused. So we certainly want that to play different. So these results are going to come directly from here. We're then going to loop through these results as we moved. I'm going to take the question, what was the last character 84? And I want to put here, here, and here. So I want to put all those inside there. And then I'm going to put that inside our question to go here. All right, so how are we going to do that? We're going to run an advanced filter. So we know the criteria is already located right here between L2 and L3. And our results are going to come here. So we're going to determine the last row. And if it's less than four, we're going to exit this up. Our criteria, L2 through L3, our original data all the way here be based on A3 through J, our original data, all the way over our original data. We have our criteria, and then the results are gonna come from X through AE. That's exactly where we want our results, X2 through AE2. Our results are gonna come there. We're gonna determine the last row of those results based on column X. If it's less than three, let the user know there's no questions that exist for this quiz, so I might have some issues there. Okay, 
if it's less than four, we don't need to sort. But if it does, it has more, I want to sort based on the question number. Essentially, I want to make sure that the questions are in order, that question number one is first, question number whatever is last, the higher the number. So we're going to run a sort based on Y3. We're going to make sure it's ascending, and we're going to set that sort all the way from X3 all the way to A3. So it's going to sort it based on there. So let's put that sort based on question number, based, oops, based on question number. Okay, so once we have that, what I do is I want to continue down. We need to set that initial question number. Okay, so B7, because we're starting this quiz, we want to set the quiz number, the question number, to 1. So B7, that selected question number. I always want to know what that question number is. As we move through the questions in this quiz, B7 will change. So the initial one is going to be 1. If for some reason B7 is equal to B8, what if it's the final question? This would be hard to believe, but if you added one question and there was only one question and the total number of questions, so B8 is always the total number of questions, if they were equal, I want to make sure that we let them know that that is the last one. So what do we need to do? Did we notice there's, the, notice there's a next button here, but I wouldn't want to put a next button on the last question. What do I want on the last question? I want a different button to show up. I want the one that says finish quiz. So, so this one's called finish quiz button. Otherwise, if it's not finished, I want this next button to show up. And both of these buttons are part of a group called quiz group. So we need to dis make that distinction. If we're on the last question, then what I want to do within the quiz group, the finish button, the finish, I want to make sure that that is visible. However, and the next button, I want to hide it. However, if it's not the final question, I want to make sure that the finish button is hidden and I want to show the next button. So that's all we need to do there. Now, if the user has created, uh, put this timer as yes, D5, then what I also want to start the timer. I'm going to run a macro called start timer. We'll be going over that macro soon. Also, if D11 equals yes, let's take a look inside the admin D11. We see that the back to start option, if we look in the quiz sheet, we have this button called back to start. So if the user has decided, the admin has decided to show that, give the user the option to go back to the start. I want to make sure that this button is visible. Otherwise, we are going to hide it. So we're going to check if D11 equals yes, we are going to show that button using this back to start button visible equals true else we are going to hide it back to start button visible equals hidden and likewise we're going to go with the previous button maybe we do not want to give the users the ability to do previous if we decide to um, back option says no then i want to hide the previous button so that we do not give the users to go ability to go back we only give them the ability to move forward so we might want to do that too and so we can do that here. If D12 equals yes, then we're going to show the previous button. Otherwise, we are going to hide the previous button. Okay, great. Very good. And then all we're going to do is run a macro called load question. So this macro load question that we're going to do next is going to run every time we load a new question. So the most important thing when we run this macro is that we do have the question number that is associated here. So we need to put that question number nine. So that's going to change. So, but we already set it to one. So we've already set it to one here. It's going to change. We're going to run a macro called load question. I also want to do if the runtime is set to yes, if the admin D, D10 equals yes, we don't need, then we're going to start this one. We don't need, yeah, I can get rid of this. Actually, we don't need that because I've already got it right here. Starting the timer starts timer. I had two macros there, timer. Okay, so we don't need that. Now, what about if we want to continue the quiz? So let's take a look inside here. If I go back to the start, this gives us an option to continue the quiz. So there's a macro that's tied to this continue quiz. And I want to make sure that we do that. We run this. So the macro is called continue quiz. And it's this one right here. First, I want to check for required fields to make sure that B5 is not equals empty. I want to make sure that we have a student ID. I want to make sure that we have a quiz from the drop down list, right? Make sure they didn't change any of these. So we need to let the user know to make sure that they didn't change. Okay, so that ensures that the required fields are there when we continue a cruise. Okay, again, just like when we do that, I want to hide this group, this group here new quiz group we must hide that so we're going to do that just as we did before we are going to also hide columns d and e and we're going to show columns f through k and the quiz group visible equals true right we want to show the quiz group and that basically means when we click continue we are going to show this is the quiz group here's the quiz group this big group of shapes and we are going to also hide columns d 
e and we're going to show f through k okay so what else are we going to do inside this macro so we can continue cruise now what i want to do is again i want to double check to see just like we did before are we showing the back buttons are we showing so basically we need to sh know whether we are going to show the back to start buttons or the previous button and we're going to reset the timer so are we doing all of that when we continue so we want to make sure that we're going to show the appropriate buttons just as we did before in the prior macro okay great so remember if we remember when we ran the start button we wanted to load the question up so that's very important when we load the question it is this load question that's the next macro that we're going to go load the question so this loads it and so basically what we want to do inside this macro i want to look at the question number and i know that when we have our quiz data here i'm going to take a look at our quiz questions here and i want to know i know the question i know the number so i want to loop through these if it's question number one i know it's on row three row three is going to have the option one two three so we've already loaded our results here for this quiz so we just need to basically extract this information and place it directly inside here and to do that we're going to use some several shapes to help us with it cell g4 will take on the question we have a, a shape here called option one i have a shape here called option two three and four associated these shapes will take on the options and i'll be adding in of course the the a b and c myself through the code okay so with quizzes the question number is going to be based on b7 we know that already g4 is going to take on our set question number what does that mean now if you take a look inside g4 g4 here is our question where is our question going to come from it's going to come directly from the quiz questions right here it's going to come from x column x and the row this is row three how do i know it's row three because question one's always going to be on row three if i know that if i take a look x here's the column right the question number is one plus two that means row three x three that's going to set our question so if we're on question number two this is going to be x four and that's going to set our question what about the correct answer the correct answer i want to place in b10 which will be hidden correct answer should go right here and where's the correct answer going to come from it's going to come directly from column a d and whatever uh, associated row so a d in the question number plus two three four five the correct answer now we're ready to add the options to the buttons i want to reset the option buttons and i want to add the text to that the first thing what i want to do is i want to color the buttons associate i want to color those buttons if we take a look at these buttons we see that they're all color coded right but if i select one they're they're going to change the color i want to make sure that they all go to that green background color and the black font so that's the first thing that i want to do so to do that what we want to do is loop through the buttons so for option because there's four buttons for the option number equals one through four i'm going to focus on quizzes now these option buttons remember they're inside a group so when they're inside a group i must call that group first then call the individual buttons inside that called option one two three and four so to do that dynamically we're going to say with quizzes shapes quiz group option this is the dynamic option number that means one two three or four so that's the shape it's based on that dynamic number i'm going to go text text range i want to put that text as black so i want to put in the text of that question how do i get that option that where do i get daniel russo from where do i get john smith johnny lawrence or mike burns where is it coming from it's coming from the question questions here it's coming from option one option two three or four it's coming from here so I, but how do I know the column dynamically this is equal if it equals column we know that this is column 26 option one where's option one it's going to be option and the number one plus 25 so option plus one 25 so it's going to so if we add 25 to each one of these we are going to get the correct option and that's just what I did in here so our text frame that means the text of the shape where is it going to be based on I also want to add it so here it is here's where I'm going to add in the option right here it's coming directly from the rows associated with the question number plus two and the column is 25 plus the option number so that means 26 27 28 or 29 okay so that's going to put the text inside the shape but remember it's not just the answers right it's not just Daniel it is also a b or c d so I also want to put that I want to put in these a b c or d so how do I do that well I don't really since it's a loop and I'm doing the same what I want to do is I want to extract the character number now I know that a 
is character 25, right? So if I, again, let's just show you one more time, equals character, I think it's 65, right? 65, character 65 is that, that capital A. So that's what I want to put in there. So how do I know that? If option number one is always going to be A, then I can just simply do character or in VBA's purse, we can do uh, ASCII character. We can do that using the character number. So I need to do the character number. Option number one plus 64 is 65. That means it's an A. If it's option number two, I want a B. That means 66. So character number 66 is a B. So I'm going to place that a b c or d and i'm going to use this the right parentheses and then we are going to add in our then our question we're going to add in a little space but after that then our question and that's how we get a b c and d we can use the numerical value of the character along with that space and then the question so we can combine that and that's going to be the text for our button so now that we have the text i also want to fill the color i want to make sure it's that original green only if it is selected are we going to fill it so that green is this color right here rgb 227 and i used i just ran a macro to determine what that was and i also want to make sure that the font is black and this is going to say set the font to black font to black okay and then this is the background color button back color to light green okay great so we have that all right, continuing on. And we're just going to basically loop through all one through four. And that's going to not only is going to color it green, but it's going to add in the appropriate option for each one of those. Okay, great. If it's already answered. Now, here's a little bit of a tricky part. If I go next, right, and I select on this and I go next again and I go back, I want it selected. Notice we answered it before and I want it selected. How do I know if it's been selected before? Well, what I do know is B14. Now let's take a look inside B14. If I take a look inside B14, we're going to use a large formula. What I want to do is I want to look for the row number that's been added. If we remember correctly inside our question results, take a look at 79. I want to find the row where this has. So that means if I'm going to look up the result ID, the quiz ID, and I'm looking up the student ID, and I'm looking up the question number. If all of those match, I want to return the row that they're all located because that means every time, remember, every time we save an answer, every time I click an answer, it, so notice there's, um, if I take a look inside B14, there's nothing now, right? Nothing here. This is a, a large formula using that. So we're using the match formula. I want to match the row where all of those conditions are correct. The question, the result ID is B2. The question, the quiz ID is B6. The student ID is B5. And the question number is B7. So when all of those match, I want to return the row number. We're indexing a row number. This is a named range. So I'm going to index that. So basically, as soon as I answer that, that new row is going to be here. Notice it, 80. So now it's 80. That means all those conditions are met. So if we take a look inside here, we now have in row 80 result ID number 14. With that result ID, remember it's here, result ID 14. So all of those conditions are now met. We now have the quiz ID 14. We now have the student ID. We now have the question number. So everything is accurate. And I want to return that row number. So I want to put it directly inside here. So if I know it's been saved, I know it's been. So if I go to the next, right, this one hasn't been saved. I haven't answered it. It's nothing here. But if I go back and I find that this B14 is not empty, I know it has been saved already. And therefore, there's an answer there. So what do I want to do? I want to look up the answer. If I look in here in the quiz results, I want to look up. I want to see here's their here's the student answer. So whatever they've answered, I want to take this value, this value right here, and I want to make sure that it has been all that it's already colored accordingly. So how do we know that? Well, I can look, I can look up inside our questions and I can look right here or whatever, whatever one we're on. And I'm going to look and see where it's located. I'm going to look at that option. I'm going to find it and see, is it option number one? Is it option number two, three, or four? So inside the questions, we're going to look for that right here. So how do we know that? So we know B14 is not empty. It's so first of all, I want to extract the answer test. Where is that? Where are we going to find that answer text? It's going to be directly in here, side here. 
the, their answer is gonna come directly from here, column G and whatever the row associated. So I'm gonna put that into a string variable. So the answer test is based on column G and whatever row that's associated. So this is their answer, student answer, putting it there. So now what I want to do is I wanna find it, is if the answer test is equal to empty for some reason, then, then the answer's already been cleared. Maybe they cleared the answer. There's a possibility. How do we clear the answers? Because if I retake that test, I'm gonna clear all the answers. So if the answer's already been cleared, we don't need to worry about that. So that's all we need to do. So if the answer test equals empty, so let's put this answer text cleared on test or quiz retake, quiz retake. So that's why why we might, it might be blank. Okay, so if it's not blank, so answer cleared, then we're gonna go to all the way down here. We're gonna skip everything else. But if it, there is an answer, what I need to do is I need to find the answer number. Is it answer number one, two, three, or four? A, B, C, or D. So how do I find that? Well, it's gonna be on the questions database. So the questions database, where is that? It's gonna be located right here. If we look inside their quiz questions here, I wanna find it, just as I've mentioned. I know the row, so let's take a look inside our quiz sheet. We're looking at what was the name of the alien, right? So in B2, this is question number three. So we know that we know it's question number three because it's located here. So that's gonna be on the fifth row. So our quiz, so we know it's on the fifth row here. Here's our fifth row here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look in this, for this range here, from column 26 all the way to column 29. I wanna look inside this specific range. And what am I looking for? I'm looking for the answer test. That answer test is we've already extracted it directly from here. So we see Steve here. So that's actually, this is question number three. So we're going to look for it directly inside here. So how do we do that? Well, inside this quiz questions, we pull it up here and we see that we see Steve is the third option here. So we need to look for it. So I'm gonna run a find command. I'm gonna look for it. And I'm looking for it directly inside here. So how do we do that? The answer number, in case it's not found, it could create an error. We're gonna wrap it in on air and resume and go to zero. Okay, so the, the question, this is the row number. In this case, that row number is five. We're on question number three plus two, row number five. We're looking all, starting with column 29, 26, and we're looking all the way to column 29. So this is the range that we're looking in. It's that range, that highlighted range there. What are we looking for? We're looking for the answer text. And what do I want? I want the column. I want to return the column number. But so let's say we return column number. Let's say in this case, you see it's, it's Steve and it's returned column number 28. So Steve is in column 28, but I don't want 28. What do I want? I want the question number. That question number is one, two, three, or four. That's what I want. Or the option number. I should say the option number. I want option one, option two, option three, or option four. So if I subtract 25, that's exactly what I'm going to get. Because if it's found in 20, column 28, we subtract 25, we are going to get three. We know the answer number or the option number is three. So it's very important. Why is that important? Because I need to color, whoops, I need to color this shape. There we go. I would need to color this shape dark green with a white font. Option number three, that's the one I need to color accordingly. So we can do that. As long as I have, I know this is three, then I can do that. So as long as it's not zero, then what we can do is we're gonna take the option number and the answer number three, and we're gonna give it a specific fill color, this set green background color, green background color. This is that specific RGB value for that dark green. I also wanna set the font to white, right? So making that font white is 255, 255, 255. That's gonna set that font to white. So we see how we've given it that font. Now, if we change the answer to Gert, and I go next, and I go back previous, that's gonna be remembered. It's now option number two. And why is that? Because now we see Gert is found in column 26. That set that second option. And that is what we've changed it to. So again, we've pulled the answer, this time Gert, and we've looked it up here inside the results and we see it's now the second option. And so we can do that. And that's important because we don't have an exact match because the reason we don't have an exact match is because we've added these letters here. Another way to do that would be to remove the first three characters of whatever text and then look for it. So that's another way to do it. But here's a great way to do it. So we've done that. Okay, so let's answer it correctly. E.T. is the movie character there. And we can see that oh, correct answer is Elliot. Oh, what was the name of the alien? I don't think that's right. Ellie was a boy. Okay, never mind. Got no idea.
think his name, I think Elliot was the boy. Continuing on. All right, let's see the active sheet. If the active sheet name is quiz sheet, then select. And I want to select, basically, I want to select something else. And I'm going to select just another cell in here. In this case, we're using H7 to select. Okay, great. So that's all we have to do. So that's everything we have to do to load the question. But you notice there's another one called select option. When I make a selection, there's a macro that's going to run. If I right click any of the individual shape, not the group itself, and I click assign macro, we see that it is called select. Let's pull that up. We see that it's called select option. That's the macro we're going to go over now. All right. And within this macro, the first thing that I would like to do is to reset all the shapes back to their original light green color with black font. So we're going to run a loop for the option number equals one to four. We're going to focus on the quizzes, quiz group, group items, option, and option number. So remember, these shapes are inside a group, so we need to address it as such. Setting that four color to that light green color. And we're going to set that font to the black font. So black font. Okay, we're going to reset. So that's in each one of those. So that's important. Now, certainly we do want to color the selected one differently. But the first thing we want to do, we don't know. The reason we want to do that is because if I select this one, I don't know if any of the others had that dark green. I want to remove... I only want to make sure that we do one of those. So to do that, we need to reset all of them. And then again, with the one that we've selected, that is the one that's going to take on that dark green background with the white font. Okay, so once we have that, we're going to, once we finish that, we're going to set the answer text. We're going to get that. I want to know what is the text inside the answer. So I want to put that into a string variable. It's going to be based on the text frame. So whatever the answer with the letter, with that letter, is going to be put in a variable. And it's going to include the A uh, and then the quotation mark, excuse me, the A, the parentheses, the space, ET. But I'm certainly going to want to remove those first three characters. So to do that, we're going to reset the answer test based on the right. We only want the right of the entire answer text. And then we're going to take the length of the entire minus three. So we're going to take the entire length of the string minus three. And that is going to be our starting point for the right. So everything to the right of that, which essentially removes the letter, it removes the right parentheses, and it removes the space. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take whatever answer test, and I'm going to place it directly inside B12. So B12 is going to take on that. So now notice as we select it, B12 changes. Okay, all right, great. So now that we have that, once we've put their answer inside, I want to then, now it's time to color that selected button. We can use application color. This is the name of the button that called it. We're going to give it that fill for color, that dark green background, and we're going to give it that white font. So those two lines are going to take care of that for us. Okay, great. Now what I want to do is I want to save it to the database. Whatever is the, whatever they've selected, I immediately want to save it to the database. What does that mean? That means I want to save it directly to a specific row here. If the row exists, we're going to update the current row. If it doesn't exist, we're going to add a new one. Now, how do we know if it exists? We know if it exists because B14 will contain a number or it will be blank. So we can look to that. If B14 equals empty, that means not yet saved. So to do that, we need to get the first available row. And also what I want to do is I want to increment the answer. Nice spelling. I think I should be a spelling test. The answered question. The answered question, spelled it right here, increment the answer questions on newly answered questions. So I only want, in other words, I only want to increase this, this number, the total answered questions when it's new. If it's existing, I don't want. So when they click here, so notice they have not answered a question here. I want B9 to increase by one, the number of questions. However, if it's already been saved, then I certainly don't want. So I only want to do it if it's been saved before. And to do that, B9 equals B9 plus 1 only if B14 is empty. Okay, great. We're going to set the question row going to be the first available row inside our questions database. Because it has not yet been saved, we are going to create the first available row. Now that first available row is going to be 82 on the next one. Once we have that, we need to save all the information, including the result ID, the quiz name, and everything in that row. So we're going to do that in the following lines of code. Column A will take on that result ID. B will take on the quiz ID. C, the quiz name. 
D, the student ID, student name, and then an F, the question number. And then what we're going to do is I want the corrected formula. I'm going to put that inside here. I want a formula. Now, what is that formula located? It is going to be this one right here, correct? So I want to put that formula directly here. Basically, if G81 equals H81, then true or false. So that's going to let us know if we've answered the question correctly. For example, these are correct, so it's true. So this formula we're going to put in, and that's going to come from VBA. So all I need to do is just put in this is the correct formula. Okay, great. So now that we have that, I also want to put the row in the database. Now, all of this are only for new ones. What if it's an existing? Existing. Existing. Okay, existing. I'm going to set the question row equal to B14. So I want to put that. So it means it's existing. It's already been saved like this, 81. We know it's been saved because we have 80 here, 81 here, whatever, whatever. Here's, here's the 81. I've got the row here. So we're going to put that into a variable, and that variable is going to be question result row. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to check if G, if there's no question, right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to look inside here. There are times when, if we go back to the last course, we might want to clear out all the answers and start again. Now, if we start again, we are also still going to have a database row. However, we have cleared out all the student answers for that particular quiz. So what I want to know is if this is blank, if G is blank, then I need to increment the row. So meaning the results, the student answers cleared out, there's no student answer here, then we certainly do need to add one to the answered questions. We want to keep track of how many questions have been answered from B9. So I want to increment this. So it's possible, and I'll show you that in a little bit later. If the answer has been already cleared out, we do need to increase it. Okay, so that's why we have that line of code there. All right, next up, regardless if it is a new or an existing row, we're going to do the two next lines of code regardless. We're going to put the correct answer in H. I want to take what, remember that correct answer is located directly inside here in B10. I want to put that automatically in a case it changes for any reason, in case you change it. I want to make sure that those are contained in, those go directly in column H. And I want to put the student answer located in column G. So that's the next thing regardless. So G is going to take on the answer text. B is going to take on the correct answer. Okay, that's it. That's all we have to do when we select an option. The next macro is going to be the next question. Notice that when we click next, we, what do we want to do? Well, I want to, first of all, I want to make sure that we're not on the last one. Second of all, I want to clear out all the buttons and I want to make sure that we basically, all we need to do is update this selected uh, question number here. So the question number in B7, that's the one I want to update B7, very important. So B7 equals B7 plus one, we're incrementing the question. Now what I want to do is I want to know, are we on the last one, right? So notice that we're on question number five, six, seven, eight, nine. So when we get to the last one, we want to do some things. If the total question, the, the selected question equals 10 equals the total questions, I know that we're on the last question. So we want to do something a little bit different there. If B7 equals B8, that would be the final question. I know it's the final question. What do I want to do on that? In that one, I want to make sure that I display this button called Finish Quiz button, and I want to hide the next one. I don't want to hide it. No need to show that next. So we're going to show the Finish button. I'll just put here, Show Finish button. And we're going to hide the next button. Okay, so that's all we need to do if we're on the last one. And then what we want to do, B12, I want to clear the student answer. And B12, any answer that's been here, I want to make sure that it does get cleared out. Okay, and then we're going to run the macro load the question. We've already been over that. What about previous question? I want to know, are we at the first one? If we go back all the way to the first one, now you might want to say there's no need to show the previous button on the first. We could probably hide it on the first one. That might be helpful. But if we're on the previous one, we're certainly going to let the user know you're at the first question. Okay, great. And then if, as long as we're not, right, we're going to decrease B7 by one. Increment question, decrease question by one. Okay, decrease. Okay, so now that we're decreasing it, I also want to check, again, are we on the final question? That might only come up if we only have one question. So again, show the finish button and hide the next button, but only on the final question. Now on a previous question, like I said, this would only come up if there's one question. Okay, again, we're going to clear the student answer and we're going to load the question. So that's a previous question. Okay, great, great. So we've done all that. Let's go ahead and uh, answer all of our questions here. And we're going to get to the next one. So now what we have here 
is we've got we're going to get to the last one once we're at the last one i want to make sure that we're again we're going to show that completion button and we are going to hide uh, the, the next button and that's going to be that finish quiz so what happens when we click finish quiz again we have a macro that's tied to this finish quiz and that's called the complete quiz button so if we take a look inside here right clicking it starts off the screen click assign macro you see that it's called complete quiz right so that's the one we're going to go over before complete quiz we just finished up previous so what do we do with complete quiz we're going to stop the timer i'm going to run a macro called stop timer which we haven't gone over yet and that's going to stop the timer even if it does even if it's not on just in case with the quizzes the result row i want to put in b3 i want to know that result row because that's where we're gonna have to save some information I want to make sure that we get them. I want to know the row there because I want to make sure that we add that to that. Okay. So now what we want to do is I also want to be able, if the result row, we're going to go back to start quiz. Run a macro called back to start the quiz. If for some reason the result row should never be zero, we have to have a result row. Continuing on. Okay. We're going to clear what's in G4. It means I want to clear the question, right? We don't want, when we click this button, I don't want this question to show up inside g4 and i also don't want to show this group so i want to hide this entire group the quiz group must be false so this entire quiz group i want to hide that okay now if the user decides to show the results and that's going to be in the admin if we say here show the results if i click yes i want to show the results of that quiz and what does that mean when i click finish i want this shape to show your final score is one question of 10 of 10 correctly so i want to make sure that that is displayed this particular item quiz group score however if it is not if the user has decided to show click no here inside b14 we're going to show something else so if d14 inside our admin equals yes then this shape quiz score group this is the shape quiz score group i want it displayed otherwise we are going to hide it otherwise if admin d13 equals yes i also want there's another one here called retake button do we want to retake the quiz so here's that one retaking the quiz this is where we're going to get all the answers removed but we may not the admin may not allow the user to do that so if the admin is not allowing the user to retake the quiz we need to hide this button called retake quiz how do we know if the user says retake if this is no b d13 is no we need to hide this button so if bring this over here if the admin d13 equals yes then we are going to show the button retake i want to show that button inside the thank you group group items retake quiz button i want to show it retake this one here that's not the thank you oh this one this one sorry we've got two different ones i'll show you both in a second in other words the retake quiz button will also show on a different shape so retake inside the quiz score group it's correct inside the quiz score group uh, we want to make sure if we're going to retake it okay however if the user has decided that they do not want to allow the user to retake it then this retake button must be false okay there's another shape right if the admin yes show the results is yes but what if they are not allowing it to show the results so if we take a look inside the retake quiz or and i go through the quiz again and let's just i'm just going to go all the way through i'm not going to answer but i add the admin oops <laughs> I went too far. Okay, so let's say we decide we are not going to show the results. Okay, and let's put not retake the quiz. So no, so no recreate and no show results. As we move through the course all the way and we go back to finish. Okay, so this time we're not showing, this time we're showing something different. It just says thank you for the results. And notice there's no button down here. There's a hidden button here, which is called retake the quiz. But because we're not allowed, the, the admin didn't allow so that means this else thank you group this is the thank you group this is called thank you group i want to show this when the admin does not allow us to show results not on showing results so we're not showing the results and we're going to close it and we're not allowing the user the retake the course so also within this thank you group there is another button called retake it but because they said no on d13 i want to make sure to hide it so if, if we decide to say yes allow them to retake the and we allow we click close and we do now we, we say a new quiz let's do a new quiz here just so i can show you the difference here and we go there and we start the quiz and we go through every single one of them going really quick we don't need to answer them and we finish quiz so now notice look now they can retake the quiz because we've decided to 
to show you retake quiz. So on either one, this will be visible here only if they have allowed us to retake the quiz. Okay, great. So that is all we do for the complete. But what about when we actually do want to retake the quiz? So again, we've got buttons here to retake the quiz. And we also have buttons on here. Let's put this yes. So it's the same thing, right? When we retake the quiz and we close that out and we allow them to, let's take a look inside. When we retake the quiz, what is it that we want to show? So we start the quiz, we go through the quiz, and this time we've allowed them, we're gonna show those results, it's gonna be zero, because I haven't, let's click one here. Okay, so we've one question, wow, I got lucky. We've got a 10%, I don't need the period here, probably 10.0%, I'll figure that out. I'll put a zero on the format, I'll update that, and I'll show you what that looks like. So let's take a look inside here, I wanna update that, I wanna put a zero right here, right here. Okay, that's what I want. So that's the format, so this final score is going to come from somewhere. This text is going to come from somewhere. Where is it going to come from? It's going to come from B19. Now, what's inside B19? Final score equals, okay, I want a character 10, meaning a new line. Your final score is B17. Questions were answered correctly. It's coming from B17. Total correct is one. Okay, and a B8, a possible B8, is the number of questions you have answered. And then what I want to do is I want to get a percentage. So the percentage is going to come from B18. You have answered this percentage correctly. And it's going to come directly from here. So first of all, the total correct. I'm going to use a count if. I want to know how many are correct. Now, I've got some named ranges that I want to show you based on those question results. So basically, I want to count all the trues when certain conditions are met. If I go into the formulas, name manager, and I go down to here, question result, we got one named range for correct. We have another name name for question, a number. I've got another one for quiz ID. I've got another one for result ID. And I've got another one for row number. Okay, so knowing that we've got a bunch of named ranges, what we can do is I can use a count if formula. And what I want to do is I want to count all of the ones that are true based on the certain condition, based on the result ID is B2 for this one, based on the question or the quiz ID is B6, so for this specific quiz. Okay, based on, I also want to know the, the student ID based on this. And I also want to know the questions are true. So that's going to give us a total true. Okay, so we know how many were true. Only one was true. And it's basically going to count these results. And we see that we only have in the last 10 for this 14 here. We only have one that is true, which is this one. So that's why it returned one. And then all we need to do is determine if we've answered one correct. And we know that there were 10 total questions. We can then use a division based on that. Okay. And we have the text. So that's how we get the text for this. Now, when we retake the quiz, what do we need to happen? Well, that's the macro that we're going to go over right now. All right. Just a quick reminder, though, that if you have not joined our Patreon, please do so now because I'll be making updates, additions, features, and a ton more on our Patreon. It's just a few dollars a month, and it would greatly help our channel and support these free trainings. Okay. So what we're going to be doing inside this, the first thing what I want to do is I want to hide the quiz. Thank you. And I want to hide this. So the first thing, whatever group, whether it's this one, the score, or the thank you, I want to make sure that it is hidden. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to hide both of these shapes to make sure they're hidden. We're going to clear the existing scores. Now, that's really important. I want to clear a bunch of different information. So how do we know that? So basically what I want to do is I want to take the results here and I want to look, let's say we're going to retake this 14, right? This one here. And I want to clear all of them. I guess we already did clear that student answers here or 16 or whatever. I want to make sure that we're clearing all this. So to do that, we're going to run an advanced filter. And I want to look through all of the items here, all the questions, and I want to clear, I want to look at the row, that original row, look at it in 78, and I want to clear uh, what's, what is student answer. So when I take a look in row 78, and I would clear their answer here. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. We're determining an advanced filter, and then we're going to run that advanced filter based on criteria N2, and the results are going to come Q2 through Y2. So the results are coming here. I'm going to extract the row number from column Y. Very, very important as we run a loop. So we're going to run a loop, determine the last row based on column Q. If it's less than four, we're going to exit the sub out. Okay. And then what well, we're going to should be less than three. 
Okay, so if it's less than three, we're gonna exit that. For the result row, it goes three to the last result row. We're gonna, again, extract that row from column Y. And then what I wanna do is I wanna take G and I wanna clear the contents. I wanna clear the student answer. So we're simply gonna loop through all, any of the answered questions here, any of the answered questions, and we're gonna extract the row and we're just clearing the loop, clearing their student answer because they're retaking the test on clearing all the prior, prior answers. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to reset the option button. So we're going to go back. We're going to set the question back to number one, resetting this uh, question ID uh, in seven to number one, back to the first question. I want to know the total answer, setting that back to zero. So that's going to come back to zero. B12, I want to know any of the last student answer. We're going to set that to empty. So the last answer is going to be empty. Then what we're going to do is I want to make sure the quiz group is visible, right? So when I click that button, retake that quiz, I want this entire group to be visible, the quiz group. We're going to show that. Once that is visible, again, I want to loop through all the shapes there and I want to make them all that light blue. We're looping through those, resetting all the shapes. So we can do that here. We already went over that code in another macro. Okay, if for some reason B7 equals B8, then we're on the last, right? We're going to show that uh, finish button. And then but we should probably hide that, hide the start button, but hide the next button, but this is almost never going to come up. Okay, so then what I want to do is if D10 equals yes, what does that mean inside the admin? That means that they have set the timer to yes. If that is the case, then I also want to make sure to display the timer here. And how do we then run a macro to create that timer? And we're going to come up with that in just a moment. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to run the macro to load the question. So we're going to start and stop the watch, and that's going to set this time up. Okay, very good. So, and then we also have some additional formatting here based on that while we're at it. Home, we'll go to conditional formatting. I don't want to show any of that unless we have admin is, if D10 is no in the admin, then I want to hide it. We can basically change the font color. I'm changing the font color to the same as the background in this case. We're changing that, setting that font color. And basically what that do is as soon as they say no, it's all going to be hidden. So admin, right? And it's going to be hidden. So as soon as it shows to no, it's going to be hidden. Okay, great. But what if it is visible? But now you saw it was red. But what if it's red? And basically what this means is that lapse time is greater than the time limit. So I want it in red. However, if it's under, let's just change that to two or one. Let's do one. If it's one, it's going to be green. So if we're within it, it's going to be green. Now, if we're getting close to within a minute of it, it's going to change to orange. So how do we do that as this timer moves up? And I'll be showing you how the macro that makes that work. So, but while we're on it, we can use some conditional formatting. If we go into the home, conditional formatting and manage rules, we can see that we have two different rules. We notice that if K3 is greater than K2, uh, the time limit K3, then we know we're going to call it in red. However, if K3, the, the lapse time plus 0 0.00069444, and what is that? Well, that's basically one minute. Greater than or equal to K2, then we're going to color it orange. How did I get that one minute? It's relatively simple here. We know that one day in Excel, a day is one. So we can do equals one, let's do in parentheses, one divided by 24. Okay, that's the number of hours. Now, what if I want to determine the number of minutes? The number of minutes, we're simply going to divide it again by 60. And that is going to return that number. And that's exactly where I got that number from. Okay, very good. So that colors it. It's nice. It gives it a color. Let's the user know that they are, the student know that they are coming close to within the time limit. And as soon as they go over, it changes to red. Okay, great. So we have that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to start quiz. Remember, I said there was another one called back to start quiz. And basically, this is the macro. We click back to start. You see that back to start? That is the macro that's tied to this button right here, back to start. So what do we want to happen? Well, in this case, the new quiz, I want to show that new quiz group. That's, of course, that shape of group called new quiz. I want that group to show up. I want to show columns D and E, and I want to hide the other columns. So to do that, we need to do that D and E. We want uh, to show those, and we want to hide F through K. And I also want to hide or show the associated groups with that within that. Okay. All right. So that's it. Back to relatively simple. Now, what about when we close? close the quiz. What do you mean close the quiz? So if we get back to the start all the way up here, remember there's another option here. We go to the final, finish the quiz, close. When I close it, what do I want to happen? I want to clear, I want to get ready for the next 
quiz. So to do that, all we need to do is we want to hide the quiz group. We want to hide the thank you group. We want to click back to start quiz, right? We're going to go back to here, going that, and we're going to select new quiz. And new quiz is going to clear out all those fields that we went over. Great. Okay. We also have a timer. Cool. Now this timer works when we have set this to yes. So if I decide I'm going to create a new quiz and I want a timer on it, all I need to do is just, and we just click start quiz and we realize that we've got now a last time. It's going to come up every five seconds. It's here and we'll see it. So how do we do that inside the code? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we're starting the timer first. So we're going to do this down here, the first item, here we go here, start or stop watch. Okay, we're going to clear out clear contents of K3. We want to clear any values out. We're going to set the next time to zero, setting it, resetting it. And we're going to set the current time, set time equals to the current timer. Then we're going to start a timer. Now that timer is going to be right down here. That next time is simply going to be the time plus the interval of five seconds. We're going to update K3. Simply going to be we're going to format it. I want the next time minus the set time. And basically all we're going to do allow us is simply just to increment whatever's currently there by five seconds. Okay. We don't need this. We're going to set the application on time to the start timer so that it works on this continuous time. We're going to create that. That next time I want it creating every five seconds I want it to update. So that way we're going to run this macro every five seconds until the user does, clicks stop timer. Now this stop timer is going to run when they click complete the course. And at this time, we're simply going to take this particular macro on the next time and we're going to schedule it equals false, which means stop it. It's going to cancel that scheduling of that repeated. And that's how we automatically update this. And you can see that it's continuing to go on as we move through the code and the course here. Okay, very good. So we've covered a lot. I did want to show you this one. We're going to use, as we answer questions, we see that this progress bar is automatically updated. So how do we do this? Well, this is particular in a cell. I've got a basically a shape here with a text shape. It's going to say four of 10 questions. So this is a shape and it's based on whatever text is located in B13. If we see B13, it's basically B9 of B8. So how many questions they've answered. Now, how do we get this really cool progress bar? Well, it's going to be based on B9. If you see what's in B9, we know the total answered is four and it's going to be based on 10. And that's basically conditional formatting. Notice how our time went to orange now because we're getting within one minute. Okay, great. So if I go into the conditional formatting and I manage rules, we take a look at the rule. We created a data bar. Now this data bar is based on this green format and our minimum is going to be zero and our maximum is going to be whatever's in B8. B8 is the total number of questions. And then we've given it just this little bit of a preview color with a black uh, dark green border around it. And so that's all it is, is simply a progress bar that's going to allow us a data bar that's going to allow us to show that. Now it's based on this solid, this gradient fill that we've used. Now, if we were to do a solid fill, we would be a solid, but I kind of like the gradient. Okay, great. So that's it. Just that conditional formatting rule that is going to allow us to do that. So as we answer questions and it grows, that data bar changes so that we can keep track of the progress. All right, that's pretty much it. I think we've covered everything that we could think of, right? So again, we created this really incredible, created this really incredible quiz manager, right? Creating based on the data from chat GBT quickly and easily able to create these interactive quizzes all the way from data based on our chat GPT AI. We can generate quizzes in just a few seconds, any type of a quiz, any type of a question, difficulty level based on just a brief description. And of course, we've shown you how to create those categories and select and then update those as needed. It has been an incredible training. Thank you so much. Don't forget to go ahead and support the channel as you wish. Likes, shares, don't forget to comment below. And of course, we'll see you on Patreon. I also have 250 of my best templates. If you like Excel templates, I've got those on sale right now. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next week.